Howdy everybody, and welcome to another exciting episode of the Debauchery Circus Campaign here on the Random Ramsey Network. I'm Matthew R. Dawson, your friendly neighborhood host and GM, and joining me around my virtual table today are Stephen, Jr., Bree, and Brandy. Say hi, everyone. Hello. Hello. Uh, howdy. Hello. We have some exciting new content coming up very soon here on the Random Rhapsody Network. First off, we have our Halloween one-shot, The Hunt for the Trask, which is, will be on Sunday, October the 23rd, and hosted by Kyle Thomas from the Fab Five. Next off, we have our winter holiday one-shot, which will be on Monday, December the 19th, and hosted by Bree McKnight here from the Debauchery Circus. We are also coming up to the conclusion of our Magi Knights TTRPG test run of An Echo from the Stars, which airs every other Wednesday at 7 p.m. Central here on Twitch. If you want to catch up on any of our content, you can find all of that on our YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash randomrapsody. If you want to keep up to date on all of our scheduling, you can do so by following us on Facebook as Random Rhapsody TV and on Twitter as at random underscore Rhapsody. Okay, that should do it for the announcements. So join us as we dive into the world of Laropa and continue on with the adventures of the Debauchery Circus. And we're back. So when we last left off, the debauchery circus had remained in the city of Rowena after the Azure Championship had ended, so that Ichabod could meet up with his estranged family once again and to try to convince them to let them back into their lives. Um, that attempt was cut short, however, by the inevitable rampage of an ancient sapphire dragon that had just discovered that his horde had been frozen, stolen from. As the dragon rampages overhead and unleashes its fury down on the oasis city, Corin came up with a plan for the circus to collect Ishmael from the Thieves' Guild bunkhouse he lived at, while Prudence and Fearnot gathered what belongings they could, um as Mavesies, the tiefling, stood guard over all of them and protected the house. The group then raced through the city, and as they did so, the team kept to the streets and ignored the looting and rioting going on all around them as the dragon flew overhead and bombarded the desert city. And other than a couple of pauses along the way, the squad encountered very little resistance on their journey. They found the bunkhouse to be mostly empty when they arrived, save for the little old clerk hiding underneath his desk. A brief search of the building revealed um, Ishmael to be upstairs on the second floor in the back room where he seemed to be conferring with his group of friends from Port Suliard and Tenenbaum Griff, his tabaxi handler. The, together the group laid out their plan to escape Coltrast, a plan that uh, the Tabaxi tenant bomb to be f quite intriguing. Ichabod, of course, immediately tried to dissuade the notion from anybody of anybody other than Ishmael coming along, but the ever aware Corin knew that time is a factor and immediately put a stop to that conversation by inviting everyone along. The thieves all agreed and together the group headed back out into the chaotic city to regroup with Prudence, Fearnot, and Mavesies. One quick teleportation circle later, 
and the squad found themselves back in contrast. The keep was blissfully unchanged since the last the group had been home, um, and Corn and Ichabod quickly introduced the group to Lord Edmund. Though everyone in the party did keep a very careful eye on the guild members as they did so. They also arranged for the entire group to be housed in one of the empty mansions in the upper city for at least a few days so that they can all recover from the ordeal of the attack. And so, debauchery circus. You all spent some time resting and catching up in the town. You met up with Edmund, you checked in with the Archdruid, uh, studying the, the route underneath, and um, you had one last meeting with your son, Ichabod, um, giving him that scale once again. The next day, you all left, almost immediately, uh, for North Amia, so that Lapis could check in with a conclave and do some research, while the rest of you spent that hard-won gold that was burning a hole in your Queen Purse of Holding. Your group went to Antioch's Arcana and started negotiating for a few items while your turtle friend was starting to drive to dive into her research. But as it comes to Blazenir's turn, a question comes to each of your minds. And that question is, ironically, 69, <laughs> yes. which is which is what is your character's sexuality or relationship to sex? And, uh, you know, uh, Corin, you've wished for this number to come up. You finally did. You got your dream. Yep. So, Corin, tell us, how, what it, what's up with you and sex, bro? <laughs> oh, he's he's totally all about it. He's, like, not really ashamed of his body in any way. And uh, he he's probably really been uh intrigued by the fact that he has a whole new body now <laughs> um like damn i look good <laughs> i will say the whole thing with ichabod mostly just started out as a joke but uh probably isn't that now <laughs> he's into it. <laughs> he, so he didn't have any, gay? He didn't he have any particular he intentions in the beginning he was just having a laugh by screwing with somebody who was really uptight um and then developed a real crush <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah probably it's something cute, like that uh, uh i don't know probably a, a sapiosexual maybe you know gets okay if you're it. a sapiosexual there's no reason for you to be attracted to Ichabod. <laughs> he is not smart in the in the slightest way i mean <laughs> <laughs> that depends <laughs> It's just like I love how that brain works. <laughs> Something about it. <laughs> no, it's it's more about like the the strength of your convictions, willpower, you know that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay. Dig it, dig it. Okay, Blazner, how about you? Yeah. Oh, hi. Yeah, me. Uh, yeah, Blazner's not really into any sex thing like that. Uh. <laughs> Yeah, he's a uh, he's Aero Ace and just does just wants to get along with anybody everybody without doing that. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. Okay, dig it. Uh, Lapis, how about you? So I mean, turtles don't really have much of a sex life till it's the you know end of their life, and it's you know basically just you know one good go at it, have a kid and or several. And then yeah, they 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 pass. So so sex is kind of one of the last things on her mind. <laughs> literally, literally, yeah, yeah, <laughs> pretty much literally. Well, Ichabod, how about you? <laughs> All right, everybody's been so curious about Ichabod. No, <laughs> um, so I I would say that Ichabod was previously obviously very straight. But in truth, he's never been with anybody except for his wife. So he's now in like a weird kind of kind of questioning phase, um, especially because uh, Apollyon showed us all that gay porn. <laughs> in the, in the <laughs> <laughs> so so um, right now, Ichabod is confused. Sexual limbo, as it were. Yeah, he's in sexual limbo. 
Hey, that's and, that's fair though. Yeah. <laughs> no, there's and there's nothing wrong with uh to just question those things that and when a life altering mm-hmm. experience happens. So yeah, I understand. Yeah, that. I'm like I never thought I would ever be with anybody but my wife. Mm-hmm. What do I do now? Yeah. Definitely. Steal her boyfriend away from her. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's the ultimate uh the alpha move, move, right? The power move, right there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, oh, take them out and make these get together. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. St- <laughs> steal, steal Prudence's boyfriend away from her. Awful. <laughs> that, that's, that's the ultimate revenge, right there. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, Debauchery Circus, uh, you are all still in Antioch's Arcana, and the half work has already. Um, done some uh, uh agreed to do some express commissions for you all uh blazner <laughs> you were interested in the ring of spell storing and you had yeah. a few items that you're interested in trading away to try to get that correct yes uh i have a list okay so uh i wanted to uh, uh sell my uh blazing scimitar because that's a attunement and i don't attune to anything Except I do, but uh, a deck of illusions as well. Uh, and there's like a how many cards are in there right now? Most of them, yeah. yeah 32. Most of them. Only use like two, yeah. So there's 32 cards in there. Uh, my staff of swarming insects, and then I have a blue dragon hide that I was gonna put on, like just use for a shield as well. That I don't really want. So, um, so you don't want to commission to make the shield. Is that what you're saying? Nah. You just want to sell the, the scales? Sell the, sell the scales. Okay. Let's see here. And how how much gold do you do you currently have? Uh twenty-four thousand eight hundred. And then uh some platinum platinum as well. Hey look, okay. you've got just enough if you spend all of your money. Well that's actually um that's actually pretty damn close to accurate, Corin. You're not. I'm not going to lie. I was seeing if he had enough to do that. Well, now the ring of spell storing is hella expensive. Like it is extremely yeah. expensive. Um, and they, ha- they he does have one, one single one, um, that he himself has used in the past, but cr- currently has up for sale. Um, the asking price for it is forty thousand gold. Forty thousand. Yes, it is uh, used. <laughs> it is. Yes, that means uh, you know it works. <laughs> all right. So now, for but, the as far as the the other items that you have, um, the flame tongue, uh, or not the flame tongue, the blazing scimitar that you have, um, yeah. they're willing to buy that for three thousand gold. Three thousand. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. the, the deck of illusions, actually, they're willing to give you about the same thing, about 3,050 uh, gold. 3,050? Yes, 3,050. It's a little worth a little bit more than the the scimitar. Sure. Um, the, the staff of swarming insects, actually, you're, you're kind of surprised. They're willing to give you uh, 9,000 for that. Nine thousand. Cool. <laughs> I, I do technically have just enough. <laughs> yeah, you're at like thirty nine thousand fifty. Yeah, I was yeah. really curious how close you're going to be for that. Uh, what about the dragon hide? Um, the dragon hide. Um, do you remember? Was it? What was it from? Was it from a wormling? It was, yeah, wormling. Okay. Um, that one they're willing to give you about uh, fifteen hundred gold for. Fifteen hundred. Yeah. All right. So you got slightly over what you need. I do. If you want it. Uh. Give me a second. Big to, spender. Fifteen hundred. Blah blah blah. Because I don't want to do that math. <laughs> Forty thousand five hundred fifty is what I'm coming up with. Oh well, yeah, it's just there's a, uh, eight hundred eighteen as well with that. So, um. Right. Can I also do persuasion check? Try to uh, try to uh, lower the price of ring, or 
Well, I mean, you can always try anything. You, um, he's, he's, you, the two of you, you put the items on his counter. He has his ring that, um, he's holding in his hand. And you, you've said, okay, th- these are what I have. And he's told you your price. And, um, you're looking up at him. What do you tell him? Or what do you say uh, to him? Hmm. Uh, what do I say? What do I say? <laughs> <laughs> Um, it doesn't have lean, it doesn't Ichabod have to be leans over the counter and he goes uh, keep in mind we've been giving you quite a, a lot of business today I'm sure you've made uh, more money in this day than you have in a, quite a while okay I'll allow, help. yeah I'll allow you to to help him out because um, that that right. is a, a pretty good argument uh, right there like I said like I was uh, getting ready to say blazner you you don't have to make it too complicated. I just want to know if you have any role playing that you want to try to add in with that um, before I have you roll. Well, actually, I have a regular customer base and make good money all the time. <laughs> we'll see I you rolls. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't really have anything in my brain, and I think I'm just yeah. trying to force myself to think of something. Isn't helping. <laughs> no, so. I mean, if you if you can't, you don't yeah. have to. I was just giving you the opportunity. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. You can you can just feed off of what Ichabod just said. To you like, yeah, you're, uh, Ichabod's right. We we have just spent a ton of money right now. Yeah, I think that's deserving of a bit of a discount. Okay, go ahead and make your persuasion roll with advantage. All righty, persuasion twenty two. Okay, twenty two. You know that's that's pretty good. The the half orc con- considers it, and he says, "Well, I suppose if." Uh, you're willing to tell ever everyone that you meet that um, you purchased these this new gear from um, my sh- my store. That I'd be willing to uh, drop that down by say four thousand gold. Uh, you sir, sort of got the deal. I, uh, will... There yeah. you go. So instead, you're going to be um, paying for it for thirty six thousand gold, which. Um, Let's see. What did we say um, you had in total there? 40,550. Uh, so you'd get... Yeah, 41,368. So oh, okay. So... Yeah. I'm gonna minus uh, 36,000. Uh, just using it, calculators. So, with, with all that, at the end, you you still have 5,368 gold pieces. Yeah. So that's what you can add to your character sheet. After all the deal-making is done, he takes the items yeah. that from you, and he gives them um, to one of his uh, assistants and tells tells them to go clean these up and see what we can, what we can do with them, if we're going to just sell them again or if we can do something else. She takes it, and then he presents you a very lovely ring of spell storing and a, and a nice little box that um, you, you can keep in, it in if you're not wearing it. All right. Does it have any spells stored in it already? It does not. Okay. Good, good. So, does he have a set of gloves of thievery in his shop? Um, no, he, if you, um, so I'm just kind of curious, like, do you just ask him outright that question? Yeah. Or if you kind of like, uh, okay. Um, he, he, he looks at you and he does tell you, uh, oh, wow. Uh, I've never created anything like that. That's not something that I would sell in in my store. And then uh, he kind of gives you a wink. Yeah, <laughs> definitely not. Definitely not. That's that's definitely nothing I, w- I would sell. But perhaps you might want to see this item I have in the back of my shop. Um, it, it's a really lovely cloak of many things. Absolutely. I would love to see such a thing. Mm-hmm. And so he... Uh, walks you back and to the back shop and tells one of the the people who work for him to to mind the the front front um he walks you back and he looks at you and he says you need to work on your subtlety just so we're clear that's not the kind of thing you just run an outright ask but luckily no one else is in here okay i don't actually steal from people i mostly i mostly just use it to uh pick locks in the various 
dungeons and things we find ourselves oh, in. Oh, sh sure, sure, sure. And I, I don't make these things because I want to make a profit. I just make them because of the, the technical aspect of creating such an item. And then he winks mm -hmm. again at you. <laughs> I mean, so I'm telling are, the truth. So, you are. But... Well, you might be in if you want to persuade him of that. You absolutely can roll a persuasion check. I'm just saying he's like, he he, he's nah, like being, no, nah, dude, yeah, like, <laughs> he, you don't have care. to. <laughs> no. <laughs> He really doesn't. But he does have a uh, Gloves of Thievery, and he's willing cool. to sell them for 8,000 gold. Okay. Uh, let me see. I will pay him 26,041. Although I don't see them in the uh, compendium. They should be. I, I, I know... Uh, Blood from a Stone also has one. one. DM's okay. guide, so they should be. Uh, but while I've got him in the back, I'll also say, so, um, huh. if I needed to uh, make an item that I had look different, do you know anybody who could help me with that? Now, are you talking specifically, like, altering its just appearance through illusion, yes. or more of a more uh, physical transmutation? Uh, just, like, say I've got a piece of art that doesn't really matter to me. The the things that it can do is what I'm after. But I want it to not look like that particular thing. I need it to look like a completely different piece of art. Like, all the time, you know, no temporary spell or whatever. And you're actually right. I'm looking in the compendium right now, and Gloves of Thievery is not pop popping up. That's weird. I guess I'll just. Is it add... named something different in the um, in the Dungeon no, Master's just... Guide? That, I don't think so. Dungeon no. Master's Gloves Guide: are Gloves are invisible while worn. While wearing them, you gain a plus five bonus to dexterity sleight of hand checks and dexterity checks made to pick locks. Yeah, that's so weird that it's not in so, the Roll Twenty Compendium. Hm. I'll just have yeah, to just add in, it. In. Just add it in. It'll be fine. Um, you can actually put the five in on the the gear section, the the ver very back of the character sheet. There's an area I think that you can modify skills. Okay. Sure, I'll look at that. Yeah, if not, let me know. I'll look at it later. Sure. But um, as far as the, the um the other thing, um the the half orc says now, yeah, that definitely sounds more like a transmutation problem. If you're wanting to, it to physically look different at all times, you wouldn't just want an illusion cast on it that you have to recast all the time. Um, and he kind of thinks to himself and he says, yeah, uh, I, I do know a, know of uh, a few people who are, who would do that sort of thing. Um, honestly, your, your best bet would be to find a transmuter over at the Twisting Spires. Mm-hmm. Which I mean, you you, you were a uh, you were a member of the Magisterium at one point. You know exactly what the twist twist inspires is. That's the the Mage College here. Um, Do you know anybody there that you could introduce me to? Um, he he thinks to himself and he says, uh, "Well, yes, uh, I, I certainly do." Um, His name is uh, Talmor uh, Fennis. Talmor Fennis is a, um, well, he is a dragonborn, a uh, red-scaled dragonborn who works at the college. Uh, but uh, his, uh, he actually lives off campus. He, he lives in the, the southwestern district of North Amia. And, uh, I'll, you know what, I'll just go ahead and write write something here real quick. And so he uh, gets a piece of paper and kind of writes you a, a letter of introduction. Um, awesome. And uh, gives you the address. Thank you, sir. Absolutely. Um, oh. And so when you pay for the Gloves of Thievery, he, he gives you yep. that as well. Cool. So now I am done for now. I'll go back up front. Okay. Well, yeah, I mean... With the gloves back on, it's... Is that a... That's, is it a... Um, they are not attunement. They're not attunement? No. Nope. Go. Okay, good to go. Yep. So, um, once uh, Corrin returns to the to the front, um, is there anything else that any of you are wanting to look up or purchase before you go? Uh, not me. I just want to meet back up with Lapis, see what she found, and then go back home while we uh, wait. 
Yeah, um, Lapis will probably be in, um, in the research for, mm -hmm. like, it, for all the things that she wanted to research, she's going to be in there all day. Okay. Um, I have a ha small errand we can run in the meantime. Well, all right. I guess I will accompany you on that, and, um, I've got an errand that I'd like to run when we get home that I can make you aware of. Sure. Uh, is there anything, like, uh, silly and dumb in the shop? Like, a small magic item that's like a party favor. Just you, Blazier. Just you. <laughs> <laughs> there is, actually. Let me pull it up here there, real quick. There is? Always. Wow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a special well, item. Anytime you roll a one on a charisma <laughs> skill check, it follows up whatever you just said with, NOT! <laughs> um, so, you, 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 you're you um, just hanging out with uh, the half-work at once he returns, and you just ask him, yeah, you got anything silly and fun? And he says, well, actually, I did just make this. Uh, and um, he walks over to a little case and pulls out a pipe, a literal, you know, Sherlock Holmes-style uh, smoking pipe. Mm -hmm. um, and he, he sets it down on, on the on the um, counter in front of you, and he says, now, this thing is really cool. When you smoke from this pipe, um, you can actually puff smoke, and it takes the form of... Well, a single thing that you want to, like, say, a dragon, or uh, a frog hemoth, or, or something like that. It, it's it, it's not big, it, it only creates, like, about maybe one foot worth of uh, a thing, but it, it's fun, and it, it's a really good, cool party favor at parties, and, and stuff like that. Right, I'm not much of a smoker, but I could be. I look at Blazenir really hard. <laughs> I, I look at him. Wait, you're you're a pyro who's not a smoker? Yeah, um... No, the, I kind the, of missed that pipeline, honestly. You know, Blazenir, smoking's not good for you. You might as well just let me have this one. The, uh, how much does the pipe cost? The, the pipe uh, costs 1,000 gold. 1,000? Hey. Done. Yep. <laughs> 1,000 gold pieces. And uh, the half-orc says, well, you know, uh, you, you kind of smell a little bit like uh, f flowers and woods and, and brimstone. I figured smoking uh, would be your thing. Uh, never done it before, but uh, I'm willing to give it a try. <laughs> well, you know, there's a few things that you can smoke out of a pipe. You can obviously smoke just uh, just tobacco that can be found pretty much at any general store. That's all you really need. <laughs> You can you can smoke things like cannabis or uh, sued, I suppose, but that's some pretty hard stuff. You don't want to you don't want to touch that stuff. Not yet, not yet. Oh no, yeah, no. I I had a friend who was really into that sued, you know, very chipper guy. <laughs> if you yeah. know, you know. Actually, since we're being stupid and silly, Matt. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, uh, could, could you potentially make a pipe that, instead of used for smoking various plants and things, would simply blow out uh, various brightly colored bubbles? Oh, absolutely. That would be an easy <laughs> enchantment to make. I could probably do that in an afternoon. <coughs> How Ow. much? Oh, you know, I kind of like you all, and you're making me laugh a little bit. I'll do it for 500 mm -hmm. gold. Oh yeah. <laughs> so I will pay him five hundred gold for a magical bubble pipe. Fuck yeah! And he's gonna go make that. With, he's gonna have that made in a couple hours. This evening, this evening we're all gonna sit around and about to pull out the tobacco. Hell <laughs> yeah! Hell yeah! That's I'll we, draw we, fan art of that. We are we are we are doing a smoking circle here on the Debauchery oh, yeah. Circus campaign. It is now official. Yeah, right. Ichabod looks at Blaze near and Corin like really proudly. <laughs> and, <laughs> These are my people. <laughs> and Lapis, so I, I just want to want to see a scene where um you all are talking about that Lapis is still study, uh, studying and researching. So, mm -hmm. but you don't tell her anything. But then she yeah. just sits down and pulls out a, that, like a ten foot bong and just starts doing ribs. <laughs> ribs. Yeah. All right. All right. Fan okay. art will be incoming. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be... right. So once we are ready to leave the store, I am going to lead us to the southwestern district. Okay. To yeah, Blazner, you should join again. us. We're running uh, Corrin's errand, and then I hope that y'all will help me later to run an errand of my own. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, well, it depends on the errand, but probably. Yeah, I feel like you'll find it agreeable. I hope. <laughs> <laughs> my errand is, is quite useful for the party. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so tell us, where where are you going next, Corin? The southwestern district to the address given to me for Talmor Fennis. Talmor Fennis, which I'm actually going to type it out, that way you can all, all see that name. There you go, Talmor Fennis. Cool. Yep, master transmuter, or at least a decent one. Um, you have no idea, but the southwestern district, yeah, it is a beautiful place. It's actually very, very exotic. There's like a, a ton of um, of tall towers attached to uh, very large buildings, which in contrast, like you would be calling all of these mansions, like half of them are bigger than your home, your actual yeah. mansion, in fact. But it almost seems like this district is just, that's how it's built. Tall, tall townhouses with small yards in the back. Um, mage towers uh, connected to on on the sides and things like that. Um, you're as you're walking down the the streets, like you start seeing just goofy little um, arcane gizmos and gadgets in people's uh, yards, like a, a, a magical globe that um, hovers above a, a fountain and just kind of spins dramatically, or a giant crystal surface that um, catches the light and uh, makes little waves of, of light, almost like an aurora borealis above mm -hmm. a house. Very much a obvious mage-centric area that you're coming into. And Corin, you've actually lived in this area for or at least lived in North Amia for a while when you were working at the at the college and being a student there. Yeah. But like you've seen this area before, you know that a lot of uh, professors live here, but you've never really been to a lot of their houses other than your own masters who lived in a different district. So like this is just oh, this is a unique kind of cool place as well. Pete. You follow the um, and find the address, and it's not hard to, to kind of ask around and find it. It is a tall brownstone with a large red door in the front, a very conical um, mage tower in the back with a huge steeple on it. Steeple. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Go All right. up to the front door, knock, or if there's a doorbell, I'll use that, whatever. Um, there is like a, a pull, a, a rope pull that's uh, just kind of hanging there in front of the door. And like you look up and you can pass your hand over it. There's nothing there. It's like seems to be in this little uh, pocket interdimensional space. But when you pull it, it has a ding, ding, ding. It's kind of a uh, musical chime a little bit. And a few minutes later, like you just stand there for about three minutes and then the door finally opens and a very somber, uh, sour faced looking um, tiefling with um, greenish gray skin and wearing a, well, basically a suit with a, with a tie. And he's obviously like a butler of some type. You actually, you, you see him and he looks down his nose at you all and he says... Can I help you? Yes, I am here to speak with the master of the house. Master and you, Fennis. And do you have an appointment? I have a letter of introduction from the arcanery. And I'll show him. Okay. He, he takes it and he unfolds it, puts some mm -hmm. spectacles on his uh, eyes and seems to, to look at it for a few moments and you actually see him roll his eyes as though he's irritated you have a legitimate reason to be here. Mm -hmm. But then he says, very well, please step into the parlor. And he op you. opens the door and allows you all to step inside. <laughs> he looks at Blazenear and stops Blazenear for a second and he says, wipe the mud off your shoes. Oh, they're constantly... I would try, but uh, they're constantly muddy. <laughs> he, he actually, I'll, take them off. I'll take them off. <laughs> you take them off and just put them <laughs> to the and put them next to the door and just like <laughs> that's, that's that, there's no cleaning that off I'm sorry <laughs> uh, we walk into the foyer and uh, upon hearing him say this I start wiping my shoes on the rug <laughs> <laughs> you start right and like you just see his eyes go from really mm -hmm. squinty to bug eyed and then he's like no 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 stop that stop and he begins casting oh, my, prestidigitation my apologies sir uh 
<laughs> I take it. I take a step so he can clean it. Yeah, <laughs> I'm very, very chuffed to see this tiefling in servitude. Yeah, yeah, and <laughs> he actually casts the spell to clean off your boots as well. Uh, he does this for all of you, and he likes looks really, really oh, irritated and annoyed. Servers here is real. Real nice. My, Thanks, my stuff's clean because I have prestidigitation. Yeah, I'm sure. And I I'm figure sure. that elves would probably want to be clean <laughs> unless they're the hippie types, which I'm not. <laughs> yeah, I, I imagine like uh, a, a lot of elves can be finicky like a cat while the others are just, ooh, dirt and grime. Let's get in the mud. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I, I feel like as a turtle, I don't wear shoes, but... I wiggle my toe. Do turtles? But you're have not toes? here. Remember, oh, you're I'm at here? you're at the um, conclave. So. Oh, okay. Well, you know, I was. Yeah. I was. I was. In real life, away for 15 minutes, so I don't know what's going on. <laughs> yeah, I know. I was waiting for you to get adjusted before I uh, caught you up on this, but mm -hmm. um, we we will actually cut over to you for a minute right now because um, okay. now that you're actually back. So one second. Um, as for the rest of you, the 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 butler. Um, walks you into a small sitting room, um, large windows, it's very open, it, it's very nice and, um, and flower-scented, and there's a big bouquet in the center of one table, and he shows you to a few chairs, and he says, Wait here, the master will be down momentarily. And as he's walking out, you see a maid walk in opposite him, and just kind of sits, um, stands there. This is a, a human woman, um, middle-aged, brown hair with a little gray streak, bit of gray streaking, um, a bun done up in a typical maid out outfit, like think English maid from early nineteenth century. And that's basically what mm -hmm. these people look like. Um, she stands there and uh, just to one side of the door um, and is waiting um, in case anyone needs anything. More, you get the sense, probably supervising. Mm, yeah. But as as we're we're doing that, um, let's cut over to Lapis, who Lapis, you ha since your friends left, um, have been delving into research. Um, you wanted to to actually um, look up quite a few things, and you're taken to a small uh, room with that's very li very little more than just a cubby, with a desk, a, a lamp, uh, a. a an empty book, uh, ink pot quill, you know, that sort of thing. Um, and then a liaison is, uh, comes to you um, and asks you what it, exactly it is you're wanting to research. You, you, you're, you're given the opportunity to, to explain that, um, what you're looking for, and they go find the research, pull it for you and, um, from their records, and then bring it to you so that you can sit down and, and go through it and study it. And you, you, you're always given books if you want to make notes and, and things like that. Um, you can't take any of their books out of the conflict but you can read anything that they have available, and you can make copies of your own to take with you. Does that make sense so far? Yeah, nobody hear, hear you. But she said yes. I said yes. Yeah. Yes, that makes perfect sense. Okay, so um, do you remember what the research topics you were looking for? So I know one was a teleportation circle by... Um, um, Randy Vika. Yes, that place. Um, I was going to look up some stuff on like the Dream Root and Dream Seed, whatever information I can find about those. And then, wasn't there something that Ichabod was wanting me to find out? The Manual of Gainful Exercise. Yes, the Manual of Gainful Exercise. I totally knew that. Okay. Yep. <laughs> so, yeah, um, you... you uh, Tell them the, the topics. They, you actually have to sit down for a little bit and explain what information you're looking for. They write it down, and they leave you a alone for a little while while they go start pulling your research. And it does eventually, it takes a little bit, but it does actually start coming in. And oftentimes, it's like very large binder-like um, things. May for some reason, I'm coming in under too. Um, but it's very large. Uh, sometimes, sometimes it appears like an actual book, like like an an old uh, pr uh, published novel. Other times, it looks more like um, journals or or, or just stacks of paper bound together and, and put together haphazardly. It's like they, they sometimes they're making large uh, files of things that all are 
of related to one another. Other times it's literal just books uh, of history or lore or, or that sort of thing. So it, it's kind of pell-mell at times, but they also write down which sections have the information you want so you don't have to read the whole thing. You can just go to the, to the area that you're given or to the area you're looking for. Now, as far the one of the first things you're actually brought, or do, you, do you have anything you want to say before I continue? Yeah, I was just going to say real quick, too, because I forgot to ask Blazenir if there was anything that he was wanting me to research. Uh, types of moss. moss. No, I don't, I don't think I've got anything other than that. I mean, if you're serious and you want me to, to research that, I'll research things, that, too. Things you can smoke in a pipe. <laughs> I, pro I, pro I probably felt like I should give you something, so... Yeah. Well, cool. The first thing you're getting is a ton of botany books about moss. <laughs> I hate this. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love this so much. <laughs> but there are some things that, that are kind of interesting that you're given. Now, the first thing you're actually given is a, a thing that you've read before. Um, it was a dossier that you're given on the, the cult of the dreamer. But um, you do notice as you're looking through it that one of the th one things that has been added is your recent exploits down in um, in Rowena. Someone apparently has already given a detailed report, and it's made its way um, here and has been recorded in in there. So so you, you, you're surprised to see your former name, and then it's scratched out, and then your new name written next to it or above it, um, and then talking about what all you did in North Amia, or in, uh, and in Rowena. I'm definitely going to make note of that in my own little notes that that was already in there. Mm -hmm. Okay. But um, as, as far as the rest, the first thing I'm going to give you here is um, now you spend literally all day getting this information. And, and it takes a while to disseminate and it takes a while for you to, to, to make your notes. So you're, you're kind of going to be getting out of there rather late. But the first thing you're actually given is here. It's a bunch of notes on the magical tones. And uh, the, the small book that you're given, which is barely the size of a notebook, um, you, it's uh, just a re recording of every time one of these magical tones have come up in history, it, um, it's there. And there's quite a bit of information, which I'm not going to read all of it, but... Um, for those of you who are actually interested, this is a, a good lore dump for you. Nice. The thing you are interest, uh, interested in is more towards the back. And one of the things that's written about it is, is that of the three remaining tomes, the Conclave has only recently found a record of a possible location for the Manual of Gainful Exercise. Originally, there was nothing other than in one book containing its name to lend credence to its existence at all. But the Conclave has recently uncovered a tablet that suggests that the Manual of Gainful Exercise is in the possession of uh, Titania, the Queen of the Sealy City, city, which uh, Corin, once you're given this and, and you're actually able to look over it, because Lapis is able to make notes and take them with you, that name will sound familiar to you. Oh yeah, I know that person. Titania, Titania, I want to get on ya. <laughs> that is what they often say. <laughs> that is what they say about Titania. <laughs> <laughs> She's so beautiful. Alright. Yeah, yeah. Um, as, as for the Dreaming Tree itself, there is not a lot um, that they have. Uh, apparently the subject of the Dreaming Tree has, for much of the Conclave's existence, been considered to be little more than a creation myth, believed uh, by the progenitor species of Laropa, in until about the um, middle of the Age of Suffering, when um, all of the different races were forced to live underground and um, hide from the desolation that was going on on the surface. Um, it was around that time period that the Conclave traces its um, initial um, transition from from that be belief, that creation myth, to a um, cult of the five, which was a small sect of um, substraters, which are the people who lived underground during the Age of Suffering. Um, they started to worship the five heroes 
who is said to have stood against a being referred to as the Great Enslaver and led Laropa's armies against the supernatural being to, and also destroyed the portal to its realm. Records show that this cult's belief um, began to spread among the populace and gain popularity during the Age of Return, which saw the emergence of the mortal races upon the surface of Laropa once again. I can go on for this, but um, basically it, it explains, which I, uh, you guys can all read at, at your leisure, how um, the Dreaming Tree has come up in, in different histories and different um, ancient books as um, <laughs> being a gateway, a both physical and metaphysical gateway. Um, and the, the, the Conclave doesn't know for sure which is true because most of what they sift through is myth and lore. But the, the evidence of the worship of this dreaming tree and that great wisdom has been found um, mentioned consistently throughout Loropan history, though this connection has only recently been discovered by um, quite a few um, field researchers who uh, have been researching this cult of the dreamer that, that popped up. The writings on the subject... Um, talk about an immense tree towering higher than any mountain with roots that spread all throughout Europa and its branches shading the entire continent. Um, the myth goes on to suggest that each of the five prime races of Europa came from the dreaming tree and that's what populated the land of Europa and then from there you know that all the races were forced to flee underground more genetic spreading Create, went on, and that's where we get a lot of the, su the sub-races that, that we see today. But um, from th the time of the Dreaming Tree, the Dreaming Tree was um, written about, it was described as an age of dreaming, from which it, um, wonders came about, things that boggled the mind and mystified the senses. So it's been quite quite prevalent throughout all of European history, but in, in such a vague form that um, a lot of the a lot of has been like just glanced over and ignored until much recently. Now as for the dream roots themselves, here's I have plenty of folders for y'all. <laughs> oh my gosh. Hey, this is Lord Dump time. <coughs> The information about the dream roots and the dream seeds have only recently been popping up as well. Um, and it, um, let's see here. Um, you, a lot of the information in this is things you, you already know, Lapis, that um, the roots themselves emanate both necromantic and chronomantic uh, magic of some type, but it's very faint and um, difficult at times to see or identify. Um, speculation by uh, researchers um, in the Conclave um, suggests that um, the chronomatic nature of these roots um, suggests a possibility that the objects are separate and outside of regular time space. Uh, recent research on the roots also notes after frequent exposure, like, it kind of fucks with people. It can give violent nightmares, photophagia, insomnia, severe anxiety, things like that. Um, so is this just for the roots, but not for like the seeds? Um, this is what or... we're, they're talking about right now is just the roots. Okay. Um, with regards to the dreamer cult, um, the fact that they are attempting to acquire these dream roots, um, and go to such great lengths to acquire them leads, um, field researchers to conclude that the cult intends to use them in some nefarious purpose, um, or possibly somehow to resurrect this dreaming tree, though... The process of how they intend to do that is currently unknown. Um, but the, feel, the researchers do record that the cult is recruiting or kidnapping highly powerful and influential targets, including scholars, wizards, enchanters, and the researchers conclude the probability of a ritual or spell, including in, the, um, in some type of artificial enchantment. Now, the thing that kind of pops out to Lapis specifically is the dream seeds themselves are very vaguely mentioned. Curse. But there is a little bit about them, which I'm going to give now, you now. Now, that's dream seeds. That is what's embedded in me, right? Yeah, a, fra yeah, a fragment of, a, of the dream seed is embedded in you currently. Oh, just a fragment, not yeah, the Yeah, not the whole thing. 
Blazenir has a whole one. It's in I a book. And it's Blazenir has that, a whole one, and then yeah. I have two fragments. Mm -hmm. Okay, I guess I just never put two and two together to realize that you know they're widely yeah. different sizes. Yeah, yeah. The, the first one you encountered was very large, and then it shattered, and the pieces all flew into the different individuals who were there. Of those people, you're the only one of the at original party, and you still have one in your shell. Um, Corin came into contact with one when he, when he was still um, uh, Cameron, and it yeah. got embedded in his ear, and then um, Ichabod encountered one, and it embedded in his hand, I think, or something like yeah, that. Yeah, in my left hand. Yeah. Um, and then but, Corin's uh, got left behind when he was disintegrated, so now I have it. Yeah, so Ichabod still has that. Okay. Now, as far as the dream seeds, unfortunately, um, there's very little recorded by by the conclave. The only record of a crystalline object resembling the seed that you described is from a journal by a man named uh, Tilmia Farpo, um, who first recorded, um, who, who is actually the first recorded field researcher of the early Eurydite conclave. Um, the record reads, I discovered an object buried underneath the ruins of Mi Mirak Velatura, which is a place that's recorded in history as one of the first recorded cities of the Age of Returning. It was recovered from a tomb of um, Lahira Ambrosia, High King of Ilmithica during that time, and it was held in a ceremonial place of object of honor in his tomb in place of a sword. The, um, he records that the object defies identification and resists classification, though trace um, elements of necrotic and, or necromantic and chronomantic magic, magic radiates from the object. Um, the inscription on the tomb describes it as Eride Okul, or the seed of life in Sylvan. And then it has at the bottom of it um, artifact record RO A 000764. So that's the tomb of Fontaine's great 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 grandpa. Something like that, yeah. <laughs> You're welcome. I just felt like Thank throwing you. that in. Thank you. <laughs> but uh, uh, does, the, does the Erudite Conclave by chance, do they have, like, say, somewhere where they perhaps keep artifacts? Um, if, oh. are, are you asking that of your liaison? Yeah, yeah might as well. Because like, with the, having the artifact record, I'm wondering, do they have that in the conclave? Oh, yeah, like you could look it up. Like, that's the code to find it. Um, the, and actually, that's what your liaison um, tells you, that um, the, RO is, uh, the ROA is Research Outpost Alpha. Um, which is the research outpost that's in um, uh, Ravancia in the Kingdom of Hyrulean, which was the first um, Iridite conclave ever built. Um, the, the next section is just um, a file number, which probably it, it's um, in their archive uh, under that number there. Okay, I'm definitely jotting all that down. Yeah, sure. absolutely. I would recommend making that note. Okay. Um, other than that, as your, your research um, winds down, and probably by this point it's late evening and your friends are already heading back, but... Did, did we go over the transportation circle? I, I was getting ready to. Oh, that sorry. Was, that's okay. That's the next thing so, that... So I'm guessing that Corrin can get his pipe because he only said it was going to take, like, the day. Oh, yeah, but, so like, I, I imagine after you leave uh, speaking with the transmuter, um, you swing back around, pick up your pipe before they close, and then make your way back to the conclave. Sure. Cool. But um, as far as the teleportation circles, that's that one you actually find to be rather disappointing. So... Um, as, as far as teleportation circles in Rani Vika, um, due to information recently acquired by senior field researcher uh, Tomas Rothen, as well as his subordinates in the con uh, as well as his subordinates, 
the Conclave knows for a fact that the Church of Five does have its own network of teleportation circles, which are scattered throughout Europa. Um, confirmed locations uh, of them have been seen in uh, Ravancia, Ampleforth, which are both in the Kingdom of Hyrulean, um, and North Amia, which is where you are right now. Um, there, the suspected locations is a very long list of major cities in each country of Loropa, which it does include Rani Vika. However, um, they also report that they themselves don't have record of that. They've been trying to. Since they found out that the Church of the Five is connected with the Dreamer cult, they've been trying to get members of the Conclave in. But as of right now, the ones that have reported making initial contact getting in have have not been um, checking in recently. And so there are more... Um, there are more... Um, people trying to, to ascertain some of this information and trying to investigate the Church of the Five. But Sounds like a job for us. It could be. Mm. It could be. Um, there are a few other known portals in um, Rani Vika. That's, it says Ravancia, but that's supposed to say Rani Vika. That was a misprint. Um, two of them, um, Adnik uh, Lyriel, who is a half-elf, who um, is also a member of the Merchants' Council in uh, Rani Vika. The Merchants' Council, um, you're, you're explained, uh, Lapis, is um, the ruling council of Rani Vika. They, they're owned, they're run, the entire city is run by this council of merchants that basically gets, um, sits down and agrees on the prices of things because um, Rani Vika is also a very large um, trade city. Uh, most of the caravans that come out of um, the, the Jutla Wastes eventually stop in Rani Vika to be distributed elsewhere. Um, so unfortunately, the person, the, the member of the Council of Merchants, he's also on a list of suspected dreamer cultists. Um, the other one that is known to, of by the Conclave is um, owned by a wizard named uh, Julius Truss. Um, he was a former adventurer um, that the Conclave knows. However, he, they, and they do have the, that person's cir circle information. However, you are then told that that information is not something that's given out to field researchers. It is since this is owned by a private citizen, they have it for um, for quick purposes and because they have the con the contact. But they are not at liberty to give out that information without Mister Truss's um, uh, express permission, they or they just will not. Information on how to get said permission. Asking him. Contact him. Okay. Send him a letter. <laughs> Send him a sending. Well, don't you have to be familiar with him though, for sending? You know you, this guy's you name. You usually you usually have to have to be more familiar with it than just its name. I uh, think in the word yeah, of okay. sending, you, you can look at the wording letter. again. But like, uh, again, I, I just the, the the conclave is is going to reiterate this that <laughs> mm -hmm. that people don't tend to give out their teleportation circles addresses because once it's given out. Anyone can teleport into that. Yeah, they, they, okay. these are extremely protected secrets, yeah, and we're no, 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 no. likely not going to get that info. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So while these things do exist, the the it, it is very difficult to get them unless you know that person already and can ask them. Um, and they also do tell you that at, as a conclave member, you do have some access to their. Um, teleportation um, network, but it's they also ration that very very strictly. Unless you acti actively have a need to know, you don't need to know, and they don't give out that stuff. Especially, like, you're, you're not a spellcaster. They, they kind of explain to you that if you are a wizard yourself, as and a member of the Conclave, and had been working for a while, once you get up to the rank of senior field researcher, um, you, you're typically given that information, but as a low-level member who just joined, who doesn't actually have access to that kind of magic yourself, that's not something they would give to you unless they had a reason to. Like, you have you have North Amia's teleportation circle that your friend has access to because he works with you, 
and they want you to be able to get to, to them to check in quickly and easy. That's why they gave it to you. But they, it's not something like they wouldn't give you um, Ravancia's uh, circle unless you were accepting a mission to go there. That's fair. Oh, okay. Never, Never hurts to ask, though. Well, it yeah. does seem like they're curious about it, so we might be able to offer it as a mission. This is true, too. Now, um, when the conversation does come to um, jobs, they do have... Um, have some that they, they they do think you would be interested in because of the fact that you work with somebody who is from Gulfrin. Uh oh. Which I'm going to go ahead and show you that one now. Um, Are you talking shit about me? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> <They're>, <laughs> the, the conclave. No, not even the conclave. The, the conclave I know, recorded I'm that. I'm joking. That, well, I'm okay. Well, anyway. <laughs> They know that you're from Gulfrin. They know you work with her. So they said, okay, this is something you might be interested in. However, they also caution the fact that since you yourself are a non-human and you work with um, other non-humans, going to Gulfrin is exceptionally dangerous for you and would have to be addressed before you accepted that contract. But they tell you that um, there at the top there are two very brief um, descriptions which were recorded by another conclave field researcher that was given a vision um, by a cursed crown, in fact. Um, the, at the top part of that, those two lines are the information they were given, but um, through, the, through their research and, and some correlation, they believe that um, there are, in fact, two dream routes within the, the country of Gulfrin, or at least related to Gulfrin. One of them, they believe, is in the crypt of the Kaiser Weihel the um, first, who was uh, the first king of Gulfrin. His his uh, crypt is in the city of uh, Berlina. The second one is in the Shadowfell, and the only portal to the Shadowfell is in Gulfrin. They do tell you that the Conclave does have a research outpost in Gulfrin. And technically, anybody who comes out of Gulfrin or comes who leaves the Conclave there and enters into the city of Berlina, which is where it is, everybody who walks out of that building looks human. And then they weep. Mm -hmm. Because while the, <laughs> they're very non non appreciative of other of, of non humanoid races in in um, Golfrin, there are some races that do exist out there. There are dwarves, there are um, halflings, there there are a smattering of others. But throughout the city, especially the city of Berlina itself, they're not treated very nicely, not very nicely at all. And so, typically, they um, the people who go there to do research, and there are a lot of field researchers out there, and most of them aren't human, so they're given disguises or. Um, illusion of some type to allow you to go into the city. So that would be available to you if you accepted that that quest. So what you're saying is Lapis would not be well received there. In her current form, he, they would at, at least uh, treat you with suspicion and uh, sometimes outright distrust and uh, it's, it's better for at least a group that wants to keep uh, ties to some place. They, they try to play along since it's so easy to disguise that fact. Yeah. Fair. We get, we get to see the human versions of you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but you also mentioned that you're interested in um, doing <laughs> to looking into the, the Church of the Five. I believe you said. There is some work as far as that goes. They, they do want to, um, to try to get people into the Church of the Five to find out more about their connection to the, the Dreamer cult. They already, they already have fairly good proof that the, the um, high priestess of the Church of the Five, Ivek Abir, is a cultist and working very closely with the Church of the Five and because she's the head of it. 
though they don't know how deep the cult runs into the church, they know that it's a possible threat. And before the other countries of the world will, will be willing to do something about it in an official manner, they need more proof. And if, if that instead is the kind of quest you're, you would be interested in, they would have um, work as far as that goes, too. So you have a few choices of what you'd like to do. Okay, I would definitely like to take the choices to the rest of the party and, oh, yeah. Yeah. you know, let, we'll all sit down and discuss over dinner or something. Yeah, absolutely. Church, you say. Absolutely. And we're going to get to that here pretty soon, but I think this is actually a great time to pause and take a break. Because we just had a, quite a bit of information given to you. I'm sure you'd like to read the rest of it that I didn't uh, re read out in out loud. And so we're going to go ahead and take uh, 10 minutes here and we'll be right back. So stay tuned folks, uh, stick with us and uh, we'll be back in a little bit. Howdy, everybody. We are back. And when we last left off, um, Lapis had just delved deep into the libraries of the Erudite Conclave, while the rest of the team headed off to meet with a transmutation specialist who lived in the um, apparently ritzy magic area, um, lo um, magical district of uh, North Amia, which is where we find ourselves. You are introduced, eventually, to a, what I say, red-scaled dragonborn um, of middling years. He has um, very, very bright scales. Um, he does have uh, the signature glasses that all magic academics uh, seem to, to wear. <laughs> and... Um, He's wearing just a very fine set of uh, blue robes that uh, kind of clash and, and make his, uh, his scales kind of pop out. He walks up to you and he says, Well, I was not expecting so many people in my home today, but uh, my dear friend Antioch uh, says that you uh, would be interested in... Uh, a, a, a little uh, transmutation, I'm told. Yes. He uh, was showing me a very nice item in the back room of his store and suggested that you might be the kind of person I would speak to if I wanted to take a, an art object and make it look like something else. Just a permanent change. He says, uh, well, I... Well, that is indeed something I could do, as uh, most transmutation wizards could. Um, what type of item are you uh, looking to change? A carpet. Mm, a carpet. Huh? Yeah, and it's is a hideous rug. <laughs> and is this um, of the normal variety, or are we talking something more magical? The second one. He looks over at um, the butler who had come along with him, and he says, uh, Wadsworth, uh, step outside, please. Wadsworth. Wadsworth should always be a butler name. Mm -hmm. um, Wadsworth uh, bows and steps out of the room and closes the door behind you, him, and he says, the, the half-orc, or not half orc, he's a dragonborn. Half orc was the enchanter. The the dragonborn looks at you all and he says, I get the impression that uh, what you wish to speak of should be heard by as few ears as uh, possible. Would that yeah. be accurate? That would be appropriate. But in truth, uh, there really isn't much to say about it. Uh, look at Corin. It's a magic carpet that we'd like to look like a different magic carpet. Simple yes. as that. 
he he kind of go ahead, um, Ichabod, and give me a deception check. Is am I deceiving? That's true. I'm, I mean, you are you you you're are like yeah vague. you're yeah you're being intentionally vague, which is the same as deceptive. Yeah, I'm being intentionally vague, as in a you you don't need to know anything deeper than that. So can it be intimidation if I'm like? back off <laughs> i mean if that's kind of the vibe you're trying that's, to, to that's give kind out. of what i'm trying to do that's not but what you don't i'm want trying to do it. I'm, it, that's up to you that you you roll whatever you I'll want to roll. Just, whatever 14 okay um he the dragonborn <laughs> kind of cocks a nine he says mm-hmm mm-hmm i do not have a problem with not asking too many questions however mm -hmm. Yes. That does make at least a little liability come my way, potentially, which does uh, bring up the price. My services are not cheap by any means, and like I said, for the right price, I'm willing to not ask any more questions. What would that price be? Do you have the item in question with you? Yes. Please. He asked you to bring it out, um, which I assume you, you do. It's a you, it's a rolled carpet that you pull out of your bag of holding. Um, and he he kneels down and he does. You you watch him cast a spell, which you do recognize to be identify. And if, if and as long as you don't stop him, he, he completes it. Um, he just uses a spell slot for it. Um, and uh, he, he looks it over for a moment, and then he rolls it out. And he uh, brings out um, a few magical items, uh, a magnifying glass, um, a, a few other odds and ends, that he kind of examines it for a few m minutes, uh, looking it over, and he says, Hmm, this is very, uh, very fine work. Yes. Wouldn't mind asking. Wouldn't, wouldn't I? Wouldn't mind knowing where this um, was acquired. But as we said, no questions. How quickly do you need this done? Uh, I mean, we've got a couple weeks. Sooner is so better, but it is not an instantaneous requirement. I could get it done in as little as a week, if um, if that is something necessary. I could probably get it done in about four days if I really pushed myself, but I don't know if that much you're if there's that much you're willing to pay. <laughs> he kind of no. chuckles at that. Yeah, we don't need it. That what, quickly. We've got some other orders in for a couple weeks. Something like a week cost me. Um, he he sits there and he thinks to himself and he tells you 4,000 gold. Okay. Uh, so I was actually a member of the college. Can I make some kind of check to see if that's an average price for something like this? Yeah, absolutely you can. Go ahead and make an insight check. Sure. 25. Um... It's like he's not gouging you, really. It's it's a little higher than probably what it would cost, but he's he's also um, charging you keeping extra hush, for hush. for the time, and he's keeping it hush hush. So sure. when you consider that as well, it's not an unreasonable price. Like he he was for a while thinking like going ten grand or more, but four thousand it seems like a, a relatively reasonable price. Sure, four thousand seems fine. He um holds out a hand to you. I'll pay him. Uh, well, actually, he was asking to. He was wanting to shake your hand, but oh, so um, I'll shake you, it. Yeah, but you can absolutely just I, like you. You I start cannot, pulling. Cannot believe I had the right instinct. Wow, <laughs> I'll, I'll I am. <laughs> oh, I like the idea that Corin goes to grab his money. <laughs> Yeah, no. Like he, he holds out his hand, Corn immediately reaches down, starts going through his pouch, and the I guy's just like this. And shake the man's hand. I mean he's 
All you said was he holds out his hand, and <laughs> yeah. you didn't specify. So. Well, I know, I know, I, I, I know that. So it's it could be, inter- yeah, it's still just but funny. Yeah, it's, it's funny as hell. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I, I intercept and go. Uh, payment upon delivery is that right? Uh, half now, half on delivery. Yeah, so I'll pay him half now. That's fair. And he he takes your money and um puts it in a pouch of his own, which uh. Uh, just sitting there on his belt, but it, the way it drops in, you can tell it's another interdimensional space. Mm-hmm. And he writes out, um, he, he gets out a piece of paper, a pencil, and a quill, and he um, writes out basically what amounts to a receipt. Cool. That, that he, he did collect this, collect an item for, for work, and that uh, you can pick it up at X date. But literally, it's object mm-hmm. art. Um, it just literally yeah. says ob- object art um, f- for examination, and that's it. Oh, don't worry. I'd be able to locate this object <laughs> should anything happen. I think we'll be okay, though. Yeah, he's he's just a legitimate wizard who um, yeah, do- does work on the side. Like, um, yeah. you're, you're paying him to keep quiet, and there's no reason not to because that's the kind of thing this dude does. Yep. Nice. Um, and y- All right. Okay. Um, you, you chat for a little bit. He he does offer tea, and he he um instructs the the butler to to take this down to the workshop. Um, um after placing it in another um bag of holding, and the butler does so, and you you know that in about a week you can pick this up. Cool. cool. Does this All wizard right. have any weird items I might buy? He, he he's not a shop. He's not well, a shop. He, he's just he a... might he might have something that's like you know I I was trying to sell this later Blazier. on. Blazier. Uh, well, he he doesn't. Um, he, he tells you, okay. uh, no, my Etsy shop closed down a few weeks ago. Oh, oh what's happened? The pandemic. Yeah, <laughs> that damn pandemic. It just wasn't working out. I'm, I'm, I uh, <laughs> got in trouble really for sorry. making <laughs> magical shirts with a copyrighted character on them. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty accurate. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I did have a question, Matt. Yeah. When you say his scales are red, are we talking red or ruby? Uh, no, these are actually red specifically. Okay. That's cool. That's what I figured. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. I, I, for one, am eager to get back to uh, our nice warm bed. Yes. Our nice and, warm bed. And have a discussion about uh, everything that Lapis may have learned, and uh, I can show Blazinger how to smoke that pipe. Yeah, I'm actually quite confused on how this works, honestly. Yeah, it's real easy. Real easy, I swear. <laughs> I, just I just put smile. your lips together and blow. Um, do you need uh, to stop? Do you plan on um, stopping and getting some tobacco or anything like that, or do you have well, some? I, like- I assume that that's something I have because I smoke a pipe. I would so. say you have it. Yeah, I'm asking yeah. Blaze near specifically. Yeah. Is he wanting to stop somewhere and get something? I'll, All right, I'll give him a good it. recommendation. Yeah, I'll, I'll buy some. Yeah, you can st- you can stop and get some. Like I I imagine just a pouch of tobacco would only be like maybe five or six copper pieces. So let's say five copper pieces for They're cheap. Yeah, it's it's not super expensive. It, it's the it, it's the the working man's stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, you you can also get more expensive smokables if you want to from different locations. He wants to buy the stuff Willie Nelson and Snoop Dogg smoke. <laughs> uh, Ichabod is good on that front. I like to stick to whiskey. <laughs> I figured, but yeah, you can you can collect that and um. Do you all meet up with Lapis at the the conclave because she's still over there working, or yeah. what, what are you wanting to do? Yeah, <laughs> whenever we pick up our stuff. Your stuff? Yeah, my pipe. And, oh, yeah, uh, the pipe yeah, 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 yeah. You, you can head. Word. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You 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 can head. You can stop by um, um, Antioch's and, and pick up your pipe. Um, it's probably about five o'clock right now. He's closing up the shop, you, and as you walk in, ah, Corin, welcome. Come on, come on back. Uh, yeah, he's a uh, gravelly. He come on back, and he gives you his uh, that little pipe, which uh, will blow multicolored bubbles. It's not an attunement. Um, you, it's it's something that you just think of the color you're wanting, and then you blow, and the bubbles come out that color. Hooray! Yeah, that's all I wanted. Something yeah. silly and stupid—a yeah. magical bubble pipe. Yeah, absolutely. You got your magical bubble bu- bubble pipe. 
you can you can even like concentrate on the different sizes. Like you can't make sh the sh complex shapes that Blazenear could, but you could do like a, a ton of little bubbles. Big you can do just some big ones. One. Yeah, nice. something like that. Yeah, absolutely. Now, can I assume that we've informed Coltrass that we were going out for the day and would be coming back. I feel like you didn't. <laughs> I feel like you just like, okay, we're let's let's head to North Amia. Peace out. <laughs> I have the sending spell. It's fine. Okay. <laughs> I mean, you can say you did. I, I don't, don't want to get assaulted by guards every time. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna be traveling back and forth the next like week or two. Yeah, just going back and forth the next week. Every mm -hmm. single time you pop back, they they come running in. God oh, damn it, you sorry, guys! I forgot it again. Oh, you! <laughs> why are you doing this? You oh, suck. Real yeah. brain, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you just be, you create this uh, this um, this um, villain. This um, um, your nemesis is now one of the palace guards at Coltrast, who you just disrupt his every single day. Yeah. <laughs> All right. No, okay. I'm I'm being an upstanding citizen because I gotta be a a good role model for my sons now. <laughs> he ends up creating Warforged by making himself a cyborg because popping in all the time gives him a heart condition from yes. here. Yes. Yes. Uh, <laughs> and it's all Ichabod's fault. How is it me? <laughs> That's what that we did tell them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ichabod's fault. Always Ichabod's fault. I just get blamed for every problem, and I take the blame for every problem. Anyway, I'm gonna go whip myself now. <laughs> <laughs> probably, probably. Um, so you head back to um to the conclave, um, which is there in the northern part of uh, North Amia. It's actually not far from the Twisting Spires. Um, which like there's always been that rivalry between the um, the Arcanum and the um, and, and the Conclave. They they're all both very jealous of their knowledge and their lore and their magic and stuff like that. And so they're always trying to steal each other's um, stuff. And there's always just the, like this rivalry between the two of them because like the Conclave is. In most major cities, whereas the the Twisting Spire and the the Magisterium Arcanum is specifically a um, Radagastian thing, it's only here in North Amia. So there's always been that rivalry between the two of them, which you would know, Corin, being a former member. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, I had to cough. Yes, <laughs> woof, woof, woof. Bark, woof, bark, woof, woof, woof. Yep. Yeah, my downstairs neighbor's dog is going nuts. <laughs> I can hear it. Um, but you, you do make your way back to the Conclave, and none of you are Conclave members, so you have to, like, you get stopped by the guards at the front gate, and you have to explain who you are, and it takes a moment of going back and forth before they realize that, yeah, you are indeed um, friends with one of their um, field researchers, and uh, she does want, she, she does work with you, so you you are allowed entrance. And that We're you're just here to pick up our total. <laughs> Yeah, kinda. We're just here to pick up our hair. Yeah. <laughs> but you're eventually um, allowed inside the conclave, and then led very specifically. Like they, they don't. They, you're never given a moment to to break away. They lead you up to a cubby hole where uh, Lapis has been sitting reading. And uh, as you open the door and step inside, you just find basically a uh, a fifteen by fifteen room with a single desk that's just piled with a shit ton of books now because Lapis has been doing research all day long. And um, she's she's kind of in there writing notes, and you look up Lapis as. Um, as the door opens and you, you see your friends stepping inside. Hello, brother. I'm sure you found something interesting. Hey, hey. Yeah, uh, so I just got my, you know, I got the little booky thing and I just kind of, my little notebook. <laughs> that I've been writing all the notes and I'm like, yeah, so, so this is what all the stuff I found. <laughs> Do we want to talk about it here or you want to go home and get in the hot tub? <laughs> I mean, I figured we could just go, like, grab, like, ha oh, go over it over, like, dinner or something. All right. Because it's, it's, it's probably about dinner time. Yeah, I'd say it's about dinner time. It's a little after 6 yeah, o'clock in the evening. We're in the big city, so let's go get some sushi or something. <laughs> there are indeed plenty of restaurants and inns 
in North Amia, pretty much everywhere, because it's a very large city. It's a metropolis. There's mm-hmm. like uh, close to 90,000 people that live here. So you can absolutely find a nice inn that does, sure, sushi. It's out near the wharf. <laughs> nice. Seafood. Yeah, seafood and um, on on some uh, uh, puffed up grains and things like that, sashimi. Um, yeah, I lived near a port in Golfrin, so I feel like Ichabod probably loves seafood. Oh yeah, scarf. Yeah. And a- about uh, about thirty minutes later, you you're all leaving the conclave. Our scene turns to an inn, uh, a cute little place where um, the guy behind the counter is a. Um, Let's say he's a Yuan tea and knows really, really good sushi recipes. Nice. And, and, and you, you all order. So why don't you go ahead each and take uh, one gold piece off your, off your sheet? Because I, I imagine you're eating for a while and you have a few, mm-hmm. few uh, um, you, you have quite a bit of rolls and, and some sake or whatever type of drinks you want while you're there. So a, a gold uh, piece seems reasonable for a night's feast. Yeah, but um, all your your food is provided. Um, the 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 uh, the liquor is uh, warm. The tea is as well. You have your food in front of you, and um, other than like maybe a few other uh, patrons and a couple groups, there's not a lot of people here in the, in the place. So you 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 feel relatively uh, secure to talk. What is all it right. you're wanting to discuss? Floor is yours, Lapis. So I, I'm just gonna kind of go over the the Cliff Notes version of of what I found, and you know, also making sure to mention that yeah, our our uh, our our exploits in in the tournament was was already written in there, and they've already got my my name changed. And I you know kind of go over how <laughs> it's a little unsettling that is. Yeah, tell <laughs> but, me about it. That shopkeep knows everybody's name. <laughs> yep. And then I'm also going to tell them, you know, the news about the teleportation circle. And perhaps if we can find this Julius Trust guy, mm-hmm. maybe we could get somewhere. But Or if we accept a job to try to infiltrate the Church of the Five, they might oh, yeah, that put too. us in contact because they have his info. In the runny video. That too. I'm gonna. I'll also definitely po- uh, tell them the two jobs that we have available. So the options are go, basically investigate the Church of the Five, mm-hmm. which might take us to Rani Vika and then potentially to the leader of the church, or go to Golfrin and just dis- and uh, collect Dream Roots. Mm-hmm. Yeah, one from Golfrin and one from the Shadowfell. Yes. And the yes. manual of gainful exercises in the Feywild in Golfern. Yes. Possibly. Possibly. It specifies the Feywild in Golfern, I don't believe. Yep. So, the uh, it says, in the possession of so and so, who's the queen of the Sealy. Titania. Mm-hmm. Titania. That's right. So, uh, Corin and Ichabod, why don't both of you um, make history checks? Because um, you're both from that, that region in one way or another. Sure. But I ain't too smart. Do I get advantage for well, coming from the Feywild? Uh, no, because this is just I'm a general history then. thing. Well, a 14, then. <laughs> yeah, a 14 still not bad for this information. Um, he- here's what you know. Um, the Feywild I- itself also has a portal very close to Golfrin. It's on an island um, just off the um, southwestern coast. Um, the kingdom that survives there is called the Kingdom of Jura, and it is made up of a lot of different Fey that live on this side of um, of the Fey Wild, Wild Portal. Now, the Fey Wild Portal doesn't always exist there. Sometimes it blinks out and it moves um, along the ley line paths. Um, you would know this, Corin, um, between the island of Jura and the various druid groves that exist on the continent of Europa. Um, it's, there's actually a cycle of, of when they move around. Um, but eventually, it like basically it would go to a few of them, then it bops back to uh, Jura, then it goes to a few more of them and bops back. So it's actually more in the, the kingdom of Jura than anywhere else, and that's why they have their, their kingdom set up there. 
Um, but the the Sealy City um, are basically the the light side of, of the Fey. Um, they their ruler um, Titania and is the queen there along with her husband Oberon. Um, but there's also the Unseelie, the 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 dark side of the Fey. And um, Ichabod, for for your part, what what you also know is um, the fact that the kingdom of Golfrin and the the kingdom of Jura uh, has basically been in a sort of cold war for centuries. They they fight against the the um, Fey of Jura almost as much as they do um, monsters coming out of Shadowfell, which is the other portal that mm -hmm. um, that exists in in Golfrin. It's in it's in the mountains and um, behind the Shade Wall that you yourself um, served at at one point. That's something you got to know about Golfrin. We're always fighting a war on three fronts. So if if we did take that mission. Just be prepared for that. So you're fighting a war with your xenophobia, your racist tendencies, and what's the <laughs> third thing? <laughs> Listen, it, it's a culture there. I know you don't take too kindly to it, but for some people, that's the only life they ever know. But, like, uh, other cultures are so nice, though. Mm hmm yeah, that's what I'm saying, is that a lot of people don't even learn about other cultures. Well, yeah, I'm just saying that's This is kind the of... first time I've ever been outside of Golfrin, so <laughs> it was... kind of sad. It was kind of a shock, um, but it's... I, I find that I've got a bigger difference between me and the, the government of Golfrin than I do between me and my friends here. And I gestured at Corin and Lapis. No. Growth. I love growth. growth. <laughs> <laughs> but if we do go back, I'm just saying to be prepared for some some mindsets. Um, and you know, understand a lot of it's just ignorance. <laughs> um, I do point out though that if we do go to Golfrim for that conclave job, they have hats of disguises for us. Should we feel the need to use them? I'd still rather infiltrate the church. I, I would be kind of down for that, too. I'll be honest, going back to golf runs a little bit intimidating for me. But, um, you know, that's, if, there, that's if, fair there, too. if there's a corruption in the church, I feel like I've got a bit of a responsibility to weed that out. And then we, that's, I'm, I'm good with that, too. Blazinger, what do you think? Oh, uh, I was distracted by, uh, subclass abilities um <laughs> sorry if you, you vote want to for uh, infiltrating the church you might get to burn something well you burn stuff in golfer yeah i could burn actually no i don't anyway. mind. <laughs> I, I wouldn't possibly it, it's but... possible too with the church thing it might take us to golfer in anyway yeah like i don't know i guess uh infiltrating a church sounds fun don't really want to deal with uh, the worst side of humans uh, just yet. <laughs> so. Although I do, I do hope for that manual. So maybe we could pop into a druid grove here and there, <laughs> and just hope we get lucky. <laughs> oh. Sounds like it's the church then. I mean, one of the main uh, druid groves would probably know where the portals are right now. Yeah, if it's scheduled out, we could look into it. <laughs> Infiltrating the church it is then. Yeah, that sounds fair. Okay, <laughs> awesome. Well, um, Lapis uh, would also be able to, to know that um, if, if you want to look at the, the actual, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? The schedule for the, the Fey portal, um, the Conclave probably has that too. Cool. Well, maybe when we come back to pick up our things, we can search that. Mm -hmm. I'll make sure. Yeah, um, like I'll 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 write it down for you, and I'll just give it to you as a as a thing later. Um, but okay, so it sounds like um, after a, a fine meal, you all um, want to talk to the the conclave about the about infiltrating the church and, and learning more about that. Yeah, yeah, we'll accept we'll accept the mission. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, so he, you all head back to the conclave. Um, speak with. Uh, Lapis's uh, research liaison for more information about this um, this church infiltration thing. 
the information that they give you is that, um, as they, as I've said previously, Ivic Abir is the high priestess of the Church of the Five. Her main headquarters is in uh, Ravancia, in the kingdom of Hyrulean. And um, from there, she does most of her work. Her work. Um, think of it as, as like um, St. Paul's Basilica in, in Rome. Mm -hmm. That's what um, the, the Church of the Five um, building is in in Ravancia. It's like their main location. And from there, um, the, the church's um, organization spreads outward. And the, the, um, all the, every single city has a church of the five, pretty much. Because mm -hmm. the, the religion is very, very uh, spread out and well-known. Um, but Ravancia is, is its heart, is its mecca, is its um, St. Paul's Basilica, like I said. Um they do know that um, Ivic Abir um, travels quite frequently. In fact, they have um, recent uh, in intel intelligence that she had um, flown away from her um, personal villa in Ravancia on being carried by two blue dragons who actually... Um, was carrying um, large crates of supplies and things that she left um, with. They know that she traveled from Ravancia to Rani Vika in the Margarden Federation, at which point the, the two dragons split off, one traveling to the east while the other traveled south to Rowena. They know that Ivic Abir was in Rowena during the... Um, the Azur Championship Tournament, but left basically like uh, the the next day. And they also now have information that you Lap has provided that um, the Zaim had given away the the dream route that was there and had given um, the people who fought in it other um, boons instead. And so, so you recognize your work there. So presumably, maybe if we can make a connection, he gave it to Ivac. That's the Conclave suspicion as well, though um, I'll tell you all from um, out-of-game purposes that um, Apollyon did not reveal um, the fact that he knew that happened, but um, the Conclave has put the same two and two together that they think that's a likely outcome. Okay, it's like ninety nine percent. Yes, that's exactly. Okay. Yeah, that, that's their con that's their conclusion, though they don't have direct proof of it. Um, but um, from that point, they don't know where Ivic Abir went to. They they have no uh, intelligence on that. Um, none of the operatives that they do have, because they do have a, a, an operative that's in um, Ravancia in in the the Temple of the Five right now. Um, and they do know that um, Ivic Abir has not been back to Ravancia since leaving it on the Blue Dragon. Okay. Um, they they can tell you that they actually did I ever give you Ivic Abir's uh, dossier? I don't think so. I'm gonna do that so. real quick. I'm gonna give that to you real quick. Right now, it seems like uh, Rainy Vika would be a good place to start. Absolutely. Let's find out after you read this. Okay. So here is the, the document on Ivic Abir. Um, a lot of it is information that I'm not going to read out, um, but the, the Conclave does have a full workup on her. Um, they do know that um, she was a, a nobly born and that she um, lived for most of her life in a uh, nunnery in Rani Vika. They do know that... Um, they, they believe there are rumors um, from around outer R R Rani Vika that suggest the possibility that she was actually forced into this con the convent by her parents, though they don't have anything to confirm it. They do know that um, she r 
just lived her teenage life into adulthood um, working in the church. She um, has been, she worked in many different temples throughout the years. Um, Laveran, Duskalo, Rowena, and eventually Northamia when she was ordained as the high priestess. Um, at, or then, at, in North America, and then she was ordained as the high priestess and was transferred to Ravancia. So she's been around, and a few of those names you actually do recognize. Um, they, it's said that her time as high priestess is considered to be a great success. Um, she, she's actually um, opened a lot of new temples and had um, quite a few built, including um, Ichabod. Um, you remember about... Uh, 15 years or so ago, um, there, a new temple had been built in Galfrin, in, um, in Berlina. And um, what, as you're reading this, you realize that um, High Priestess Abir was the one who actually commissioned that. Um, and, the, and, yeah, sorry. But um, at, she, she does maintain her office and living quarters in um, what's called the Quintarium. Which is the, um, the 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 temple of the five in Ravancia. Um, she also has um, her own uh, room inside Buxley Palace, which is the palace of the, of the king and the senate in um, in Hyrulean in, in uh, Ravancia. She also owns a uh, uh, some property as well. She owns a yew tree villa, which is the villa that she um, lives on outside of Ravancia. And she also has, um, she recently um, completed a temple to Joran in um, Rani Vika. And she means, uh, uh, she has quarters there and, and, and at the nunnery. And she also has a beach home, which is um, located um, very much north of uh, the Dauran Empire, the Dwarven Kingdom. So you're starting to see, like, a, 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 I imagine all of you are kind of seeing a little bit of a pattern here. Mm -hmm. what, what are your thoughts after kind of looking over this new information? Uh, I, I still feel like Rani Vika is probably a good place to start. Mm -hmm. Um... I don't know what people would usually have as like a vacation. What season is it right now? Like um, right now it's sorry. Go ahead. Um, right right now it's actually um the beginning of summer. Okay, so do people do rich people tend to go on summer? Like you know, I don't know. <laughs> I, I mean, yeah, sure. I'll, some rich people absolutely do go on vacation during some. Yes, I, I would say that's that's a well known thing that people do tend to prime tend to um, chill and, and have vacations during the summertime. It's no different than anywhere else. Yeah, because seems like we could go to Rainy Vika or we could go to Ravancia. Oh, you it's, say we could go to Rainy Vika? You say what does the conclave want us to do for this mission? They just want us to so, like so um. Find it? If you expressing in, interest in um, in the Church of the Five and, and getting more information about them and their connectivity to the cult, um, they they tell you that there's a few different things that that they want information on. Um, they they yes, absolutely, they want to know where Ivic Abir is right now, and they, they want to find any information leading to her location and what possibly she has planned for the Dream Roots uh, on. Um, they, like, they don't have any specific um, missions outlined. They more have been looking for volunteers to um, who are interested in that. Um, and there are a few things that can be done. They they want to send somebody to try to break into her home and her um, quarters in Ravancia and see if they um, can find any documentation or information or anything that leads to what's going on with this cult. Or any more information about how deep the cult is embedded into the Church of the Five. So the um, her villa and her um, her office and living quarters in um, in Ravancia is something they would uh, love for somebody to break into and find out what's there. 
Um, apart from that, yes, um, the nunnery in um, Rani Vika is also a place of interest to them. They know that she has connections to that nunnery, and um, they also know that the Mother Superior there now it was um, was somebody that Abir um, had close ties with. She was actually um, one of the nuns that lived there while she lived there back when she was young. And so they suspect that she could be a, a member of the cult. So they, they want somebody to try to infiltrate the, the nunnery and find out uh, whether or not for sure she is a dreamer cultist, um, whether or not they're using the nunnery as a recruitment station. And also there's just the general knowledge of finding any documents that ties the church to the cult or any links or any um, hidden information that might be there that can can give more of an overall clue of what's going on. All right. Okay. It sounds like, uh, I feel like it would be more fun to go to Rani Vika. Agreed. <laughs> I'm interested. I want to go to this nunnery. Okay. Well, they tell you that if... Like, if you're um, interested in, in heading over there and, and doing some research, they will absolutely hire your crew, because uh, Lapis is a, a field researcher. So they, they'll give you a contract to sign um, to travel there, infiltrate, and they will pay you for any information that you can obtain from that location. Any, any information about the head priestess the, or the, the mother superior, the, the reverend mother who runs the, the, um, the nunnery, whether or not the nunnery itself is being used as a recruiting station, um, and any information that can tie the church to the cult. Um, they, they, they would pay us a, a, a set fee for that information, um, depending on what you're able to find and, and how much information it is. It, it's kind of on a sliding scale. Um, and you, basically a few thousand gold if, if you can find anything that directly links the cult to the church, um, so on and so forth. And I don't have a contract written up for this. Yeah, sure, sure. This was all just a, a recent right. decision, but I, I will have one for you by next session. Mm. And sure. would they permit us uh, some kind of a connection to this, uh, what was his name, Yule, Yule Seas or whatever, uh, who has the teleportation circle? Um, you, tell, you, you tell them that you kind of want that information, and they, they, they tell you that there's so a lot of cost on travel expenses. I mean, they don't even necessarily have to give us the information if they've got Just somebody who can cast there. it for us. In, in a couple weeks, of course. Yeah, take us there. Well, um, in, in a so if you say a couple weeks, that's something that they're like, um, so this is time sensitive stuff that that they're looking to do. Like they're they're hiring people right now to go out right now and, and do this job. Yeah, well, if if why you're, would we be waiting a couple of weeks. Well, for this? I thought we had a couple of things that we were waiting to get. I'll be totally without my sword and my armor. Hmm. Well, so that's the decision your, your group's going to have to make. If you're wanting to wait a couple weeks and and do other things in the meantime, you can certainly do that. Um, the Conclave is, is going to have to hire out the the jobs that they have to, to people who will take them and, and, and go do them. So if you want to wait, you, you can certainly do that and see if the job is still available in a couple weeks. I didn't realize that that was... <laughs> okay. I mean, I mean, it, it seemed like they just vaguely wanted people to look into this, so I well, didn't realize that they were like... Well, every, this this whole situation with the cult is a time sensitive thing because they are actively yeah. moving about right now and actively doing things. They want to know right now what the hell's going on because they're trying to get the other countries to like see this as a problem and do something about it. You know, gotcha. right now they're just like small groups doing random things. They know that something's going on. There's some conspiracy here, but they don't have enough information to get like governments involved. I mean, we could probably get you a set of temporary plate to wear. I have an extra set of other armor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just uh, shelling out an extra 1500 for more. Yeah, because I'm like, I don't know. I thought we were having uh, like, you downtime. Can. You can. You so. absolutely can. I'm not telling you you can't. I'm, and 
there is the possibility that in two weeks that nobody has done the thing that they're trying to do, and it'll still be there for you. I'm not. I'm not saying you can't. I'm just telling you your options. You you can either take the job now and go do it right now. You could wait, and it might be be there. It might not be. And there's other things that you'll do in the meantime, or or what whatever. It's entirely up to you. But like um, for the dream root things, things like that. That that's a the, a high priority um, issue for the conclave right now. So they're literally, if your group doesn't take it, probably somebody else will soon. And if it hap if that happens, it happens. So it's up to you. Well, it's up to the rest of the party. Um, I believe you're more useful with your sword and armor. So, unless we just want to send one of us to do it, but. Yes, I mean, obviously, we should probably go as a group. I mean, we don't have to. <laughs> but, uh... A solo mission could be fun every once in a while, you know? About it. <laughs> okay. But, uh, yeah, we probably should wait. Okay, so you're gonna wait uh, till the two weeks are up, and... And uh, so, um, so you can get your equipment. That's totally fine too. Um, so then, my question is: for those two weeks while you're waiting, is there anything else you're wanting to accomplish? Listen, everybody. Well, when we're back in, when we're back in Coltrass, and we're all hanging out in our mansion, then I'll tell everybody my plan. <laughs> so I assume we can just kind of go back. Oh yeah, if you, if yeah. you're wanting to just uh, leave from there, like it, they tell you, okay. Um, these are the missions. Are you taking them? Um, well, we're thinking about it. We'll, um, in a couple weeks, when we get our things that we need, we'll we'll come back and see. And um, if it's still there, we'll take it then. And they're like, okay, cool, peace. So you're able to just uh, teleport back to to Coltrast if you want to, because you can do so at any time. Oh, yeah, we're not going to spend two weeks hanging out in in uh, North Amia when we have a house. Yeah, um, I, would so I would assume not. Yeah. Go back home. Now we're on this map hanging out in the hot tub. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, abs say, absolutely. I say, all right, I, I have been thinking, uh, and I feel that Tenenbaum needs to go. And here's why. He is uh, deeply oh. ingrained in this, uh, in this syndicate, uh, and he's a negative influence on all those kids who we are now trying to reform, I should hope. Um, he is aware that the Zaim is a dragon, uh, which is a problem for us. If the Zaim or anybody in the syndicate should ever find out who was responsible for this Steven, uh, he knows exactly where to find us and where our house is. That's a problem for me. Yeah. Thoughts? <laughs> Agree? Are we in agreement here? <laughs> uh, I, don't, I don't like having a Thieves Guild member in, uh, in the place. Well, one that we know, because there's probably more. But, yeah, uh, he can see, oh, this place is rebuilding, uh, they're weak, yeah. you know. I I don't doubt that very soon he'll probably try to reconnect with some of his guild members, and I'd like to get to him before that happens. He was also the only one amongst the group to balk at saying something when I said that the only price for travel and saving their lives was to not cause problems here. I think uh, I think it's worth cornering the guy, and I'd I'd like to have backup should it turn real ugly. Um, yeah. But if anything, it's a problem we should take care of sooner rather than later. Is this going to be like one of those old, you know, like plays that uh, like, is like this town ain't big enough for the both of us type of thing? Yeah, this exactly this town. I, I would be willing to give him the chance to just uh, run off, uh, but yeah, yeah, that's only if he convinces me. That we have done him a hurt so badly that he will never, ever show his face or rise up against us again. Which is a very hard thing to convince me of, but I'll give him a chance. Yeah. Sure, sure. But, uh, you know, Lapis, I... what do you think? <laughs> I just need to get a costume on for this. Uh... Yeah. We'll get you a big hat. I need a, I need, I need to look the parts, you know? <laughs> but if I, I think we should do it tonight, honestly. <laughs> It is probably around uh, eight nine o'clock by this point. I would imagine. Yeah, I get the well, sense he's tonight. probably a night owl. I, I would like to do it away from the kids. I don't want them, you know, uh, coming to his his defense. You know. Sure. Should we like us? 
you know, wait outside of the, the wh whatever house we gave him or whatever, and just uh, wait for him to walk out and then jump him. We could do that. <laughs> we could follow him around and see if he, if he passes into an alleyway of sorts and jump him. <laughs> Although we are not more stealthy than he is that much. I, I can be a bird. Yeah. But yeah, so. if you scope him out, let us know where, <laughs> where it looks like he's going, then we can kind of move into position and jump him. Okay. I think it's good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm like, in truth, the problem is going to be that he's, you know, he's going to be fast or he's going to be, you know, sneaky. I feel like once we get him, he's got. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. That's, also, that's uh, also, if he's not at his home, I could talk to the plants to see uh, where he went. Because yeah. I actually prepared that today, so that's uh... a... <laughs> See? That's why we gotta do it tonight. Okay. <laughs> so it sounds it like... It tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it sounds like you're heading over to the mansion that uh, Lord Edmund had uh, given them to use while while they're recuperating. Which is, uh, like, down the street from your own. It's, it's not too far. You know exactly where it is, because you dropped them all off there. So you all go out together, um, rearing for a fight... And heading to to the mansion, and we're so trying to get rid of a problem. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and so you said you're just going to wait oh. out, wait outside. Well, I might. We could ask because these they're living there all together, right? Yeah, all of them were staying in the same place. Maybe we could. Maybe we could talk to Prue. See what if she knows his schedule, if he's been going out, or if he's home, or what. I don't know. What do y'all think? Uh, probably a good idea to get a schedule. Mm -hmm. But although asking her would invite suspicion if something suddenly happens to him. Oh, you uh, just asked. I don't care after the fact. <laughs> <laughs> I just care about the before the fact. If Prue finds out I killed this guy, it'll be, it'll be worse. <laughs> you know, it'll be the, the least of my problems to be honest. <laughs> Will she give you the information, though? We're not gonna be sus about it. All right, do you guys want to talk to Prue? Then? Uh, yeah. uh, I imagine you're all standing in the street across the <laughs> across from the, the mansion, and you're all just <laughs> arguing out in the middle of the the night air. <laughs> this is like the on the way over. Okay. Um, well, we might as well just make it seem like it's a visit, and then if he's home, yeah. you know, we can yeah, wait around your, if he's not home. Yeah, I'm, it's just a visit. See how yeah. everybody's doing. Okay. All right. So I, I knock on the door. I don't kick it open. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, that's good at least. <laughs> Care to grow. Like, I, I walk up and lift my foot like instinctively to kick the door and then go, oh, what am I thinking? <laughs> <laughs> and, and you give the door a good knock. Okay. It's nine o'clock at night, but there are actually there are still um, lights still on. Yeah, there, no, there's still lights on inside. I, I doubt you would have knocked on the door if there weren't lights showing that people are up. Um, and and like a, a few moments later, um, that's funny. Um, Jedi Slayer four twenty says these guys need a talking to from the HR department because that totally happened to them last week. But. Um, now I'll tell you that story later. But anyway, <laughs> um, you, you go and you knock on the door, and a few moments later, um, you hear someone unbolting it from the other side, and it's uh, Mavesies, the the tiefling, and he, he he looks at you all, and he kind of like looks behind you at the others. He's like, uh, "Good evening, good uh, evening. How are hi. you all settling in? Uh, well enough, well enough." Uh, we we spent the day um, just kind of resting uh, and uh, speaking amongst ourselves about what what's going on and what 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 we're going to do and uh, we appreciate the 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 manner here that uh, your lord is uh, lending us for this time. I, I think it's uh, it's been a good day. It's been a good that day. all sounds, re you that all sounds real good. That you Macy's. need. Uh, you you both talked at the same time. I didn't hear you. <laughs> Do you have everything that you need? Supplies and the like? Um, 
yes, uh, Lord uh, Lord Edmund sent over um, some provisions and, and things for the house, and I, I actually went out to the, today to the general goods store and, and picked up a few things for everyone as well, uh. so... Excellent. Whole life story. Mm. <laughs> All right, Pepsi. <laughs> well, we just came by to uh, check on the lot of you, so uh, you mind if we come inside? Uh, he, he looks at you for a moment. Make a persuasion check, or an intimidation if you really want to. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's the only thing I'm good at. <laughs> I, I am, I'm intimidating by just beginning to walk through the door, not waiting for a response. <laughs> 25. <laughs> I mean, he, 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 like, he what didn't need much to convince mm -hmm. you, but as you just storm in front of him, he's like, mm -hmm. yeah, go for it. And yeah, he lets you, you buy. I'm, right. I'm sorry, maybe he's, uh, you know. He, he, he looks at, uh, as Ichabod's passing and, and Blazner says, I'm sorry, he's like, I understand. It's a difficult adjustment. <laughs> Uh, I don't suppose Prue and and uh, the kids are up, or Tenenbaum, perhaps. I, I believe Fear Not is asleep now. Um, the rest Good. of the the kids are upstairs in their room, settling in for the night. But I'm fairly certain they're still awake. Uh, Prudence is in the kitchen. Um, perhaps you'd like to come into the 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 parlor here, and uh, I'll go fetch her. And um, you, the their mansion looks uh, fairly similar to yours, actually. It's it's laid out. I walk into the kitchen, <laughs> and he, he just kind of um, rolls his eyes at, at, at that. And Prudence like re reacts as you're as you walk in. She's in there doing the dishes, and you you just kind of clomp along with those spurs. And she looks back at you, and she's like, "Ichabod, what? I I was not expecting you here this evening." I was just coming in to, to check on you and the boys, of course, and see how everybody's settling in. Good, I presume. Mm. She she kind of scowls uh, for for half a moment, <laughs> but then is like, as well enough, as well enough. Most of them are upstairs right now, uh, getting ready for bed. Well, that's good. That's good. Uh, I look back at my my crew and then look <laughs> back at her. <laughs> uh, Oh, say, I had uh, something I actually wanted to talk to Tenenbaum about. You know where he is? Um, she she shakes her head and says, uh, No, actually, I, he, he left uh, this morning. I haven't seen him since. Uh, he hasn't been back. Um, Maisie chimes in and he says, Oh, I, I believe I, I saw him over at, uh, what's the name of that inn? At, at the front of the front of town. And he's kind of trying to snap his fingers for a moment, and I don't actually remember it either, but I'm sure there is one. <laughs> okay. But but anyway, um, he, he tells you that um, last time he saw him, uh, Tenenbaum was earlier this afternoon when he went into the inn. All right. Uh, thanks. Uh, and then I, I awkwardly go to say goodbye to Prue. Like, I go to give her a hug, and then I stop, oh, and then yeah. I hold my hand out for a handshake. <laughs> Yeah, like you see her recoil just a little bit as you step for forward, like, uh, no. And then she, she's like, it, it, it's fine, Ichabod. It's, you have a good night now and get some rest. All right, sounds good. I tip my hat and walk away. <laughs> yeah, you, you just go walking away right out the out the door, I suppose. Um, Mavesies, what else am I gonna say? Yeah, yeah. Ma Mavesies hey, looks hi at to your kids. Yeah, Mavesies Except looks at bed. <laughs> Mavesies uh, escorts the rest of you out, and he says, "I, I do, I do appreciate uh, getting us, get, giving us a, a, a doorway out of Rowena, but that's not going to be a regular thing here, is it? Showing up at all hours of the night shouldn't be." Um, no, not stuff. all hours of the of the night, but I do hope I can pop by and say hi to my kids. I'm sure they'd be happy to see you. Just you know, a little, little for like, not this late. That's all we ask. Yes, this was simply uh, due to us returning from the city, and I insisted we make sure that you have all of the supplies necessary. Make a dis deception check, I guess. Uh, guidance. Yeah, can you have advantage? Because we're all helping. I'm... 
<laughs> I nod like, yeah, I was I was a little worried about y'all. I, I admit. Um, sure, why not? It is uh, the lateness of the hour. It, it wasn't going to be a hard d uh, DC anyway, but yeah. Tw uh, uh, 26 total. <laughs> yeah, with the with your 26, he's like, fine, fine. Uh, oh, where were, where were you all? Like, he, he sits there and tries to chat for a minute. Like, he does a Midwestern <laughs> goodbye where he, he'll sit there and, and <laughs> chat with you in the, in the doorway a little bit. Uh, um, Good night, sir. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> tell tell Acom or tell Ishmael I said goodnight. All right, see ya. Goodbye. <laughs> I accidentally stay there for like another two, three minutes. <laughs> yeah, you, you, the two of you just just start talking about North Amia and, and the shop there, and he seems really interested. So, so yeah, loud for, for <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the, the two of you start talking about magical items and and how cool they are, and you, you, you know he, he he's a, he's a little bit of a bard, and you're a little bit of a bard, and you, you know so the personable. I yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Eventually, Blazer. the, the music starts playing that comes on at award shows when someone's speech is too long and they need to wrap it up. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, but you know, eventually uh, the, the conversation dies down, and you all go wandering <laughs> off. Are you heading straight to to the to the inn? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, uh before we go there, I'm gonna actually use one of my new abilities. Uh, so I get to roll, just expend one of my bardic inspirations and roll on a table to uh, see what uh, random thing I get. So I'm gonna do that. What? What's a this random now? Random thing. Yeah, uh, it's I, my it's my uh, bard. Uh, what not? College. Uh, yeah, it's this. But uh, there's a bunch of different. College effects. of Spirits bard. That's what I did. Fontaine as in the one. Yeah. Shot. Okay. Um, so. so you reach out with the spirits who tell you the tales through, through you. Um, let's. What's your spiritual roll? focus? Uh, I pull out a little tarot deck, and just okay. kind of shuffle through it. Yeah, oh, he's really got Fontaine energy. <laughs> Why are you being me right? Now? <laughs> I just—it's the one that seemed interesting. Inspired. It was neither that or a skull. So mm -hmm. I mean, you could have <laughs> made your own. Um, I guess, but I just did a what it was a, you know what, what was said. No, so, I yeah, it. it's no, themes. It's fine. <laughs> themes, go. Yeah, so it you roll on a spirit. Uh, yep. Which, so this um, is the story you're thinking of today. Yeah. So uh, what 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 do you get with a three that you rolled? Uh, tale of the beloved friends, well, and uh, okay. when I use that, I'll tell you what it does. <laughs> All right. For a little mystery. <laughs> okay, why not? Well, you hope go heading down to the local inn, um, where you last heard that Tenenbaum was hanging out at, or at least seen going into. The, t the, the inn is um, a much more lively place than when you first um, came through this area, There's, um, which you actually stayed in at the inn when you first came to, to Coltrass. So you, you remembered a little bit. You put a you put on a circus in the town square here. And you go heading over to that one and um, look around. And it is very, very lively at this point. There's a lot of people. Uh, like, it, it's 9.30 at night or so. Um, there's, a, there's another bard playing some music. There's a lot of clinking of glasses and whatnot. Um, it's quite lively. What are you wanting to do while you're here? Uh, take a peek around, and see if perhaps Tenenbaum is here. Make a um, per or per uh, perception check. Couldn't uh, I'm going to take a look as well, even though I, I got, got 16. 16. But, you know, 28. Yeah. <laughs> Just because so he's stealthy. Yeah, um, as busy as it is, Ichabod, you're looking around, trying scanning the crowd, and there's so many people there you don't actually see Tenenbaum, but Blaze near you like see all. <laughs> and you do see in the very back corner, um, there is the naked cat Tabaxi, um, sitting at a table with about six other men. Oh, <laughs> Interesting. Uh, he's, over, he's over there, Ichabod. 
Sorry. <laughs> yeah, and he's got company. He does. Don't much care for that. Um, he better not be trying to start a little guild here in Coldtrast, <laughs> but I am not uh, stealthy enough to approach can, an eavesdrop. Can I see any of their mouths moving? By chance? I mean, not from the other side of the bar. No, you wouldn't be able okay. to. Um, but you could try to get closer and, and attempt that. Yeah, uh... Just kind of mosey on a little bit closer. Okay. Go ahead and make for me a stealth check. Stealth check. Wow, 22. And while he's doing that, what are the rest of you going to do? Um, I would like to stay on the side of the bar far away. Um, if I can get to, like, the bar to order a drink while remaining very far away from that side. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like like I said, okay. they're at this, this the, the, the far bar. table okay. at the very back of the of the inn. The the bar itself is towards the, the front entrance, and, and the bartender does greet you as you step o over towards him. So I just want to act natural and go up to the bartender and exchange some pleasantries. Mm -hmm. Business is going really well. I'll take a whiskey. Yeah, absolutely. Um, he'll give you a whiskey, whiskey for um, seven copper pieces. I guess I'll just sit at the bar and try and see if I can listen in to other people nearby talking about what's been going on lately in the area. Okay. Make that perception check. Looking for some rumors. A 12. Okay. Um, so first off, I want to resolve um, Blazenir. And Blazenir, you do start stepping... Um, Start walking around people, trying to get a little bit closer. You do see a, um, a, a small seat near a fire that's within, you, you're guessing at least a listening distance of them. You go over there and, and sit down, and you sit in a way that, like, you're kind of facing in that direction, but it also looks like you're just kind of sitting there enjoying the fire. You, you, you feel me there? Um, sure. and, and with your 22 um, stealth, for, for at least the moment, nobody seems to be looking at you. You can see that the six of them, um, two of them are dwarves. One of them is a, um, is a Yuan Ti, and um, one of them, two, or two of them, is human. And then there's Tenenbaum, who, who's sitting kind of in the back corner. Um, you can, like, with your observant... Uh, feature let's see here um if you can see a creature's mouth when it's speaking a language you understand you can interpret what they're saying by reading their lips um you do you sit down and you start ob observing this uh go ahead and make a perception check okay per perception 32 so you you are you <laughs> So you are very easily able to to um, see their the lips moving of um, the three men that are facing in your direction. You can't see Ten and Bob's lips very well, um, but you can see the three men. However, as you're you're focusing and you're looking, you realize that they're not speaking in actual language. Like you you, you know Scott, well, like I know you know a few languages, but you don't yeah. know thieves can't. But how? But you have like talked about it a little bit with your friend Willow, who um who who, who explained a little bit about how thieves can't work. So it's a, a made up language that um by the the guild that guild members learn. That's uh, basically it's like a complex series of uh, hand gestures, um, mouth motions, uh, some words like you, you'll see an actual uh, com word in common here and there, but it's mostly um like symbolism and like there's a little bit of uh, asi style um hand motions and things like that and so you you realize with um your 32 without a doubt they are speaking to one another however they're doing so in thieves can't that's not something comprehend languages would help with is it it, w it would not okay comprehend languages itself um specifically focuses on language thieves can't is designed to because it's that it's not a language so okay. much well hmm not unless you got some way to read their thoughts or something uh not me no that's not what i do 
Well, I mean, them speaking to each other in Thieves' Cants is enough to tell you that oh, yeah, no. the guild members. <laughs> no, I get, I get that much. I'm just trying to think, like, what do I want to do about it? Like, I could... I just want to... I wish I had a message spell. <laughs> but I don't. It's another... Another, another one of those uh, things. I don't have that spell. Another oversight. <sighs> can I... I don't know if I can, but uh, can I try to make it like an inside check to see... Just kind of the vibe they're giving off, like... If if it's kind of like, you know, probably a bit... Something that uh, I don't want into town, or... If they're just they, kind like, of planning chatting. a heist? Yeah. Um, I guarantee you would not be able to make that hot... That specific of insight but i will allow you to make an insight sure. check to get to get kind of the general vibe of it 14 not good yeah like honestly the vibe that you're kind of getting off of it, them as they're talking is less of a like a conspiratorial nature more of like uh good natured as though they, they like you, you see at one point they one kind of chuckles a little bit and like they're they don't act tense they don't act like they're they're cowering and trying to hide their what they're doing it, it's more uh, you, the the vibe you get is more of people that just um are having a conversation simply in a language you don't understand it's like oh hey i haven't seen you in a while what are you doing don't... here oh man it's maybe so back in <laughs> i still don't, I still don't I didn't know there were other thieves yeah. in this town <laughs> sign was going nuts back in rowena you know um let's see i could i don't think like, me and Tenbon don't know each other enough for me to just walk in and just say, Hey, bud! <laughs> I could. You could do it anyways. I mean, you could just pretend like you're <laughs> here, but we also could just sit and wait and see when they leave. Let me ask you a serious question. Since when is Blaze near ever back down from a bad idea? <laughs> <laughs> Especially You've when it comes to just saying hi to random people. You've got a point, <laughs> but I could die here. But, if you, you know what? Him. You know what? I'm gonna make. I'm just gonna make a. I'm gonna make a roll. Ooh, nope. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna. I'm walking up and uh, saying hi to Ten and Bob. Bon. Okay. Ten and Bob. <laughs> ten and Bob. Yeah. I rolled an eight. So. Fair enough. So all of you. Um. The the rest of you. Uh. Corin, Ichabod, and Lapis. You, the three of you have been sitting at the the bar. Um. Drinking uh, a little bit. Just kind of sipping. Uh. More kind of watching what what Blazner does. Uh, Corrin, with your uh, 12 perception, most of uh, the conversation that you're hearing around has just been uh, basically about how well the town is going lately. Like, there's a, a few people discussing right behind you um, at a table um, that they're that the um, the money that's coming in since uh, Lord Edmund came back is increasing. There's more trade coming in. People are are getting fed, and actually, for the most part, like the the general vibe of the town is uh, one of uh, hey, things are starting to look up. Um, nice. Yeah. Um, not not a lot of people are are, um, are are doing a lot of gossiping. You you do hear um, one person talks about a, a fight that happened a few days ago between <laughs> an, an orc and the the blacksmith in town, and like it actually came to, to fists at one point, but uh, but um, it eventually was stopped by the the town militia. And um, they, they, after some uh, cold water was doused on on them, some they, they eventually were able to talk out, it out to the point that neither one of them ended up in jail. But that's really about it that, that you're able to glean. However, Working out the kinks. Yeah. However, um, you, I, I think you have a fairly high passive perception, or who? who does anybody have a passive perception over a fifteen? Uh, my passive is sixteen. I have 28. If, well, if I'm not talking to you. I'm not talking okay. to you, Blazner. I'm just, just making sure. <laughs> yes, my passive perception <laughs> yeah. is 16. Then yes, you you would you would definitely notice that um, Blazner at sitting at the fire for a few minutes uh, gets up and then just starts walking over to uh, Tenenbaum's table. 
Like I said, when is Blaze <laughs> near ever back down from a bad idea? I mean, Ichabod is blissfully unaware of this. <laughs> I am not going to mention it, though. You're not going to? <laughs> You're not going to mention it. Fair enough. Okay, Blaze near, you just go walking yep. up to the table, and as you do, they all stop talking immediately. Somebody just approaches them, and they all look up at you, in- including Tenenbaum. And Tenenbaum, like, he looks at you, and he has a, like, confused look on his face for for a minute and then you see the dawn of uh, recognition on it and he's like oh um, that's not his voice what was his voice oh uh, you are uh, 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 and he's like snapping his uh, fingers trying to remember your name Blazner. that's it Blazner. Blazner yes <laughs> Hi, I uh, just I uh, just saw you. I uh, just was visiting the bar, and I saw you were in here. And you know, uh, don't have very many drinking partners, and I was wondering if I could uh, join you. <laughs> he, he make a persuasion check. Okay, thirty-one. No, that's perception. <laughs> yeah, that's perception. What was the roll? Thirty-one. <laughs> uh, the roll 18. was an eighteen plus eight. So, 26. 26. So, yeah, still fairly high. And uh, Tenenbaum looks at the at the rest of them. Um, like, there's six of them sitting at this table. And Tenenbaum finally is like, Yeah, you know what? Why not? Uh, pull up a stool. Sure, sure. So, uh, how's, it, how's it going? I'm surprised you uh, are making quick friends in, in here. Uh, it's nice to see, though. It, you know. Oh, these end of... Uh, People I randomly met here in, in the bar, but they they seem to be uh, fa- fairly uh, fa- fairly nice people, and uh, we decided to sit here and have some drinks with one another. All right, oh, that's honestly uh, that's kind of what I love about Cold Trust. Like such a sense of community in this place. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. And, get that it, into Druid Grove. <laughs> yeah, you know. Uh, it, when you're the, the type who, who travels uh, around a lot, you, you, you meet all sorts, and it's always nice to, to find people with common interest. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I think I get what you mean. Hmm. <laughs> he kind of chuckles at, at that for a moment. Hmm. So what are you I up t- to? <laughs> uh, me? Well, I just uh, got back from a trip to North Mia. Uh, you know... Uh, I had had some unfinished business. Uh, uh, what, or, North of Mia, huh? Wow. You you uh your your group gets around. That's for sure. We, yeah. What can I say? Uh, it's quite easy when you have a teleport. So. Yeah, it must be nice to have those uh, wizardy spells, that sort of thing. I I don't know that one myself. Yeah. I honestly, it's it's beyond me as well. Uh, I'm more of a elemental type of caster myself, but uh, you know. He kind of looks you up and down. and He says, N- "Really? I would have never guessed that." I know, I know. I just give off such a look of, yeah. Uh, yeah he kind of sniffs a little bit, and one one of one of the dwarfs says, <clears throat> "Yeah, by the smell of it, you you tend to hang out in the forge quite a bit." <laughs> Uh, is is the brimstone thrown up again? <laughs> it's it's kind of there. You, you got you, you got a a lot of uh, cologne going on too, but it's definitely there. Yeah. No, uh, that's just the cape. It just smells like that for some reason. Mm. I, anyway. So, uh, what you what are you guys up to? Uh, just talking about anything interesting? Buy him a drink. Buy him a drink. <laughs> I'll hoo, put it on the table. <laughs> <laughs> A little birdie in your yeah. ear. I'm um, going table for if, drinks. If, yeah, if you you want to try to to get them drunk and, and shit like that, like um, they they have they have drink they have uh drinks uh, on the table already. There's quite a few glasses, and sure. uh, he he does tell he's like yeah sure why not you, if you're buying we're, we're willing and you you're able to order a round of drinks for everybody at the table. Like a bar, uh, one of the barmaids comes over and and you tell them one more for everybody, and they're like, yeah, and that, you know they just kind of chat about it. They, um, according to them, they're all uh, just laborers here in in Coltrast, and just kind of sure. yeah, they're just kind of ha- hanging out after a hard day's labor. Do I need to make an insight check against that, or <laughs> that's up to you? 
Uh, why not? 27. They're definitely lying. Yeah, they're, yeah. Yeah, there, there's no doubt. Bard moment for Blazinger, though, to entertain these guys, play some <laughs> music, get them drinking, have a good time. They walk <laughs> out, we're there. <laughs> Right. Also, they, uh, it works in no show construction jobs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, kind of like that. But um, <laughs> like uh, yeah. How how much you what what are you wanting to do here? Are you, is you do, wanting to do what your friends suggest to just uh? uh so I think like at this point, I kind of want to remind Ten and Bob that we're probably always watching him. No, no. Well, not like. Overtly, just be my presence being here with him. Oh, okay. Like, not. I'm not going to tell him. I'm just going to be like, yeah, like, just showing up when he's talking to a bunch of his thieves buddies is uh, just yeah. like, like, you know, like, yeah, just puts him on edge. We're at, in at and out of least. town all the time. <laughs> yeah, uh -huh. well, I mean, with that insight, you can tell that Tendenbaum like se seems fairly uh, laid back right now like he's just uh in enjoying a moment of uh relaxation and, and drinking he and, and, and that sort of thing defenses are down <laughs> sure, Use it for our advantage uh like do you steer the conversation in 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 any way in particular blazner do you just like yeah. um like just chat about bullshit like what what is your intent while you're trying I to think... to get him drunk i think uh you know, I'll, I'll, uh, see, you know, like, let them, uh, steer the conversation, uh, but, uh, you know, uh, I have ADHD, so my character has ADHD. I think I go mm. off on tangents a lot. Probably. Probably. Um, so, so what I want from you is, um, one more persuasion check, um, to see if you can, like, gain any information about Tenenbaum or, or what's going on there. Like, you're just going to be spending the next few hours buying them rounds of drinks. Um, sure. It sounds like to me. Oh, ow, 11. Wow. 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 I do so. Wow. So, okay. for, yeah, for the most part, they they don't seem to be talking about much like w with you at the table there they, they talk about you know like um the 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 general goings on at, at town the trade that's kind of coming in um that sort of thing the the one thing that since you did roll above a 10 um you are you do hear tenenbaum mention at one point like just very offhandedly that he um when he heads back to that, he, he's planning on heading home soon and um, is looking forward to returning home. So that would be back to Rowena. That that's the implication. Okay. He doesn't actually say like I, I'm planning on going back to Rowena. He yeah. just makes an offhanded comment that um, that he's he's looking forward to going to returning home. Mm -hmm. I don't know how. His name is spelled, but you know. <laughs> T e n n e m b a u m. Eh, close enough. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, I don't know if anyone else is doing anything. Yeah, I like to like. I probably hung out, you know, and just kind of sip <laughs> whiskey for a little while, and then I wanted to go outside, um, and just kind of kick around out there. I go outside and start packing <laughs> my pipe. You go outside and start packing your pipe? Yeah, that way I can spend a good uh, good 30, 40 minutes out here. Because mm -hmm. smoking that pipe down is going to take a while. Um, <laughs> but it, then if Tenenbaum walks out, I can kind of have an eye on him. I want to be kind of by the corner so I can duck back. If so I yeah, to, on, on one side of the building near the stable, smoking yeah. your pipe, just waiting for Tenenbaum. Yeah, absolutely. I get you. Yeah, I, I don't know what Blazenier's going for, but <laughs> I want to be ready in case it's what I think it is. <laughs> sure, absolutely. Um, and Corin, uh, with with that in mind, as as Ichabod heads out and decides to go smoke his pipe, um, you were at at the bar. Do you? What are you wanting to do? Uh, I mean, bubbles? I don't. What's that? Said you're gonna come blow some bubbles. Sure, <laughs> I can go outside and sit and make some rainbow we're, bubbles. So we're sitting on the side of the building, like in the alley, like. Mm -hmm. Puffing smoke and blowing bubbles <laughs> like giggling. <laughs> yeah, ab absolutely. I love it. I love it. And Lapis, 
What are you doing? I think I'm gonna stick close by Blaze near just in case he needs help. I'm gonna. Like, are you gonna go up to the table and and join oh, them? No, no. Are you gonna sit no, at the bar? I'm gonna stay sitting at the bar. You know, kind of still observe from a distance. Okay. But also, you know, be ready to jump in if needed. Sure. So they they basically are doing. They'll take a, a basically a drink an hour. A round of drinks every hour. So we're we're gonna say that they probably start sit. They sit there for the next four hours, uh, drinking and ch and chatting with Blaze near. Um, do you, I ask, do you drink with them as well? Uh, I nurse my drinks very much. So okay, but fair I'm, enough. Not if much. You drink fast. They'll drink fast. <laughs> I don't you know. I, I don't want to get drunk with them. <laughs> uh, I, I would love for you to get drunk with them. I, I mean, think I that'd be hilarious. I mean, I a small price to pay if it makes Tenenbaum fuck up and we get him in an alley. Small price well, to pay is you being drunk for one night. <laughs> hope that it will get him to fuck up. Yeah, yeah it, my, my worry is that more likely. Then, then I become impaired. <laughs> yeah, yeah but then you have wanna... three unimpaired friends and he's well, got... yeah, but I'm at the table. <laughs> Oh, they're gonna jump you at the table. Okay. Yeah, I don't. I don't know what's gonna happen. They're totally you know? laid back. You rolled a twenty-seven insight. They're totally yeah, laid back. I'm. I'm still. Yeah. I'm, I still don't want to get like super. You know, super drunk. Okay. And well, that's some, fine. You know, slip up a roll, pretty much. Well, I've, you do um, sit there and drink for the next four hours. So, or at least they drink for the next four hours. So that's four more gold pieces that they. Yep. That, that um you pay for and Already they continue on for for the night um we're gonna g i i know exactly what you're wanting to do you're <laughs> wanting to jump this guy as he leaves we're gonna resign not, um, not like the second he walks out because i assume that yeah. they're not all yeah. going to the same place well so, so he, he starts walking away mm -hmm. you know and then we start following him <laughs> so here we here's here's what happens because um um eventually um, they do start saying that they're, they're going to head out. Um, the two dwarves are the first two to leave. They, they get up and, and head out. Um, Tenenbaum, um, he, he's, he's been drinking a little bit, but he's, uh, like, he, he's had the rounds like everybody else. Um, he doesn't seem, like, sloshed or anything like that, but he, he is a, a little buzzed, and, um, he, he tells you that, um, he's actually not going to be staying with everyone else in, at the, the mansion tonight. He was planning on staying here at the inn. He, 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 he informs you of that, um, kind of, you know shakily a little bit like you, you know i'm i'm kind of i'm kind of a little up there i, I already planned for it so i'm just kind of going to sleep it off here at the inn uh well why 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 is that uh, any particular reason uh, like a fight with the kids or uh, make a persuasion check with advantage because um he he is a little bit tipsy at least and his li oh. lips are loose right. ooh natural oh. 20 for 28 hmm. So he tells you that uh, n no, nothing like that. Um, the the kids all ha have their things that that they're wanting to do right now, as far as just staying there at the house. Um, he actually has much more pressing business at back home in Rowena, and he was actually planning on heading out in the next day or so. Mm. Sure, sure. <sighs> So he might not actually be planning anything after all. He might just be wanting to get the hell out of here. <laughs> but you can absolutely still jump him in in his bed because he does head out there at some point. I'm people will tell more of the truth. What's his pressing business? You know. Uh, yeah, might might I ask uh, what uh, sort of business? Uh, I'm just curious, honestly. I don't really get to much. Uh, don't see much uh, going on in Ro or didn't see much when I was in Rolina, and I'm quite curious about the culture. Oh uh, well, writing that Nat twenty eight, he's <laughs> going to tell you a little more than he was going to than he was willing to let on. Um, he, he tells you that um, with the dragon attack in Rowena, chances are there's a lot of people dead, and people gone tend to leave power vacuums. And he's uh, very anxious to to return and and see what's going on. Ah, so get up uh, higher in the in your uh, 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 political power uh, in one fell swoop. Smart. 
Mm-hmm. Um, he, he, it also is a really freaking long journey from Coltrass to Rowena. This is like a two week at minimum uh, journey, and that's like with some speedy, speedy travel. So that that's been weighing on his mind all day, and um, he, he he does uh, admit that the the kids seem to be comfortable staying where they are right now. So it's as good a place to leave them as any. Well, uh, I hope you have a good night, then. Uh, and just uh, I don't know, put one more silver on the table in case he wants something and leave. Um, it, you getting up, he actually does the same along with uh one of with two of the humans that are there at the table. Um, the other two are getting up to leave, or the other, the other one. I'm sorry. Four or five, six, yeah, there's one more who um, leaves with you, uh, who um, goes out of the bar with you. But um, Tenenbaum and two of the humans do make their way upstairs. You do see as you're leaving. Right. Did I? Would I? I would be able to recognize the, these people's faces if I saw them again, right? Um. Well, you don't have the keen mind feet uh, sure. or anything like that. Um. I, I mean. Probably, yeah, unless they're like Probably. absolutely trying to disguise themselves, you could okay. at least uh, you, you could see them again and be like, "Oh, aren't you that one dude?" Yeah. All right. Well, I'll uh, head out with uh, my uh, the person who's shadowing me, technically. <laughs> well, they're not. They're not actually shadowing well, you. Sure, uh, they, but you know. Yeah, they they leave at the same time as you. Oh, um. Yeah, you you head out. Um, they they're walking out at about the same time. Um, if you want, like they they go one way. When if you just stop, like they just keep walking. They're head they're well, plant, yeah. they're heading home. You can also just follow them if you wanted to. It's up to you. But regardless, what uh, anything you you all want to do, we're gonna do that next week because it is six o'clock. <laughs> well, it is. Yep, but you do know now um, what Tenenbaum's plan plans are. That I I, I I basically wrote down like ten things that he want, he would he could possibly do, and I rolled on it to see what he was going to do. And so that's that's what his plan is. You now know that he's planning on heading back to Rowena. So if you're wanting to to do something um, with him, like now is kind of the time. And you know where he's staying at least for the night here at the the inn near the near the gates of uh, Coltrest. Yeah, I feel like he's still a problem. Like, as even long if as he's... we can make yeah. sure that there's not people expecting him back in Rowena. You know, like people who would miss him. Oh, who cares? <laughs> like, <laughs> the, my problem is that he knows where we live. He could go back and at any point in time decide, okay, it's time to get those kids back in the Thieves Guild because they're working for us there or something. Or he could, they could find out that some of us were responsible for the thieving, and he knows exactly where to find us. No, I understand that. I'm just no, saying absolutely. We should, we should so do I don't care if he's make sure people. there's not going to be people coming snooping around after him if he doesn't show up in Rowena. But we I mean, were with no him the whole here. way. Yeah, we came, we said, we're taking you to Coltrass. We were with him the whole way, and then yeah. he came to Coltrass. That's like, fair. Maybe he could have sent a message or a letter or something in the past day, but <laughs> I really don't care. <laughs> like... <laughs> yeah. Well, now you know exactly where he is and what's going on with him, so you can decide what to do accordingly. But mm -hmm. um, this, that's where we're going to end things for tonight, at least. So, yep. thank you to everyone who watched. We very much appreciate you tuning in. Find out what happens next time, as um, we, we try to resolve uh, the next two weeks fairly quickly, so you can get back on your next mission. Um, but we're going to find out what Ichabod and everyone else does with Tenenbaum, now that they know where he's staying, and that he has um, some plans to leave. So, that'll be a lot of fun. I'll have that res We'll do that first thing next session. So, uh, once again, thank you to everyone who watched. Have a great evening, and we'll see you next week. Good night. Bye. Good night.